Hello, mic check. Make sure that that's working there and we'll get the meeting going. All right, thank you. Working? No. Okay. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. I want to welcome everyone to the Brawley City Council meeting, successor agency for the Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency. Uh, special meeting agenda, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019, 5 p.m. here in our council chambers. Uh, if we get to roll call, please. The minutes will reflect all council members present. Very good. Our invocation will be Pastor Mark Sharp from the Valley Baptist Church. If you can all stand. And the pledge will be by Council Member Sam Couch. Okay. Invocation for Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity you give us to, to be here um, in a public meeting, Lord, in the land of the free and the home of the brave. I just ask for your blessing on our city leaders and our city council, Lord, and our mayor, as you have put them into these offices to, to lead this city to peace and prosperity. We just ask for your wisdom and your guidance. And, and as I ask for that, I just remember a book I just finished where Captain Henry Plage of the U.S. Uh, mine laying ship destroyer. While on the bridge of his ship, a sailor falls into the sea while they're docking and about to be crushed between the pier and the ship. The captain orders no one to jump in, but he jumps in on his own and saves his life, Lord. And I just pray that you would give our leaders that kind of courage to recognize situations and to act, to do the things that need to be done, to stand up with courage and integrity, Lord. We thank you for them. We thank you for their willingness to serve and, and to discharge their duties with the utmost integrity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, please join me in a salute to the flag. Ready? Begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Sharp. And thank you, Councilmember Couchman. We'll go to our first item on the agenda, which will be approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Take us to item two. Item two will be closed session. Uh, council will convene um, into uh, a different room and office, and we will return expected start time of 6 p.m. Test, test, all right. Static. Just, okay. Does this one work? You talk again. We have to just talk loud. Speak loud. I can Marge. talk loud. Marjorie's can talk loud. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, Marjorie, just let me, I gotta, let me just read the, kind of the rules of the road right for public Sounds comment good. here first. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Is hello, hello. Testing. Testing. No. No, it's not the mic. It's not the mic. Test. No. It's the volume. Testing. Oh. They're not clear. Oh, well. Just speak loudly. Okay. Well, we'll continue. Hopefully, we can sort that out. But again, I appreciate everyone's patience. We're moving to item three, which is public appearances and comments. Um, and this is going to be real important. I know in the past, depending on the council meeting, we may not stick exactly to the four minutes, but I do ask this evening, because we do want to give everyone an opportunity that is going to step up for public comment um, to, to have the time. And at the same time, we have a lot of business that we want to make sure that we uh, um, give the opportunity to um, all those um, that are here today because of the agenda or maybe other items, an opportunity. So this is not to exceed four minutes. This is a time for the public to address the council on adding items that are not appearing on the agenda. It's within the subject matter jurisdiction. 
forward here, please state your name in the microphone um, for the public record. Uh, you are not allowed to make personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy. So please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. And what I would like to do before we move to that, um, we do have a couple items. I think these can go, um, these are very important and something we typically do. So I do want to move to item A first, which is the introduction of police officer Javier Martinez. So if I could, if I can have uh, our chief step forward. See if this will cooperate with us here. No, it's not. Is there a switch over there on that side? This one, yeah. This, this one is working. I think this is working. I'll, I'll speak a little bit louder for you. Okay. It's Thank you. Working. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, mem members of City Council, Robert Sawyer, Police Chief. It's my pleasure to be here tonight to introduce the newest member of the Brawley Police family. Uh, Javier Martinez came to us a few weeks ago. Has been performing exceptionally well on his field training program to date. Um, Javier is a resident of Imperial County, born and raised here. Uh, actually, born in the city of Brawley. So I'm sure that. There's a great pride in saying that. Um, he is a graduate of the Imperial Valley College with an associate's degree in criminal justice. And he has some prior law enforcement experience from uh, Riverside County Sheriff Department and the Imperial County Sheriff Department. And we're very, very pleased and proud to have him as part of our family here today. Um, Mr. Martinez has some of the members of his family here present tonight. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to him and I'll let him introduce some of his family members and take any questions from council. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Chief. Congratulations. I don't think it's Good afternoon. I um, just wanted to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to be here. Everybody here, thank you for the opportunity to let me be here. Um, Chief and my fellow brothers and sisters, man, from the Broadway Police Department, thank you for me and my family be here. Uh, if I could uh, introduce uh, sure. my wife and my my daughters. You guys come up and stand. <laughs> there you go. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter, Mia Martinez, six years old. My daughter, Mackenzie Martinez, five years old. And my wife, Barbara Martinez. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Everybody's been so awesome. Uh, that's one of the things I noticed off the top. Um, Raleigh is a fantastic, beautiful city that we work for. The people are out in the city, friendly, always recognize. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Officer Martinez, yeah, if, if you don't mind, just any, uh, yep, yep, um, I, want a, I want an opportunity to also, if there's uh, any comments, welcome you on board. Thank you for that, your, your beautiful family, and uh, certainly we're very proud of, of not only having our own step forward, but, you know, doing the work that you're going to be doing. So, um, any other comments from uh, Council? So thank you for coming on board, Javier. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of time, look forward to having you on board. Uh, I was here for your swearing in. It was a great event, and so we look forward to having you out there on the streets. Thanks. Officer Martinez, congratulations on your new position here, and uh, congratulations on a wonderful family. We wish you well and safety. Thank you. Okay. Officer Martinez, congratulations, and I was here for your swearing in, so um, welcome to the city of Raleigh, and wish you well in your career with our city. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Okay, Marjo, back on up. Next is the proclamation presented to Marjo Mello, Library Director, declaring National Library Week, April 7th through 19th, 2019. And, uh, page four in our backup material, but um, Marjo, did you have some comments just ahead of time? Actually, what I was gonna announce as part of National Library Week next week is the Brawley Library Friends are gonna have a book sale on Saturday, April 13th. And uh, we're looking forward to having everybody out there. It'll be on Main Street from nine to one. And we have lots of really good donations right now. And then putting on my librarian hat, um, we are gonna have a huge event on May, f May the 4th Be With You with cosplay, um, free comic books, because it's also free comic book day, 
and all kinds of exciting things going on. So we also want to put that bug in people's ears. Mm -hmm. And it'll probably be from about 10 in the morning till 2 or, two or 3 in the afternoon with all the events we have, including um, an artist who has his own line of comic books. Uh, will be here, Mr. Garcia from um, Hopeville, will be here to actually sign comic books too. So his, his artwork and things. So we're really excited about that. And then I also just want to remind everybody to come check us out. That's a very corny library joke. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so. you, had, you had a couple good ones there. Thank yeah. you, Marjo. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, if I could, um, for the record, read in uh, the proclamation that we have to present. Uh, and this is in honor of uh, National Library Week, whereas libraries are not just about what we have for people, but what we do and with people. Whereas libraries have long served as a trusted and treasured uh, institution, and library workers and librarians fuel efforts to better their communities, campuses, and schools. Whereas librarians are, evol are evolving in order to serve their communities and continue to fulfill their role in leveling the playing field for all those that are seeking information and access to technologies. Whereas libraries and librarians open up to the world of possibilities through innovative programming such as LAMS vehicle, free one-on-one -on -one assistance for adults who would like to improve their English language reading skills, classes for basic computer skills, job seeking resources, and power and the power of reading. Whereas library and librarians are looking beyond the traditional roles and providing more opportunities for community engagement and deliver new services that connect closely with patrons' needs. Whereas libraries support democracy and affect social change through their commitment to provide equitable access to information for all library users, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. Whereas libraries and librarians uh, library workers and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Donald L. Wharton, Mayor of the City of Brawley, California, proclaim National Library Week April 7th through 13th, 2019. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We always take my picture. Our job. Can you get down? Can you get down? There you go. Libraries are fun. Thank you. Photobomb. Photobomb. Libraries are fun. Uh -huh. They are fun. Libraries are fun. They're a lot of fun. Book sales are even fun. They're supposed to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marjo. Thank you for all the support that the council and the city gives to the library. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. Okay. Okay, staying within. Uh, the public appearances and comments, what I would like to do, um, is, as I've read, we're going to do our level best to stick to the um, couple minutes um, that are going to be allotted. Um, I know some from the public may be here on a topic that's uh, been out there potentially in social media or maybe amongst the community. Um, and I do want to frame that for those that may be coming forward for the record uh, to come comment about that. Um, it, it could be about the several negotiations that are going on between the city and our, our respective uh, bargaining units. Um, that's a very important process. We as council certainly respect that process um, as it occurs um, for each and every one of our staff members that fall within those units. So um, with respect to our men and women in uniform is not just demonstrated um, here today. I think it's demonstrated on almost a daily basis. This council's appreciation for public safety and this council's appreciation for really all the men and women that serve the city, um, I, I certainly hope is not just echoed and demonstrated in all that uh, um, not only this council and the staff and the leadership of the city does, um, but this is not we and them. This is us, always has been, and I hope that certainly supports. I know that's not a lot of specific, and part of that is because we respect the process. So just know that this is public comment. Um, we as council are unable to get into um, specifics. It's not a, a, a back and forth. But I do invite the public, those that are here that are concerned about particular issues such as that, please be part of our, our budget process. We have multiple meetings, including a general fund uh, workshop coming up, our enterprise fund workshop. 
Um, there's actually a full schedule. It is public, but we can certainly make that available this evening as well if you want to make sure you make these dates. That's a wonderful opportunity to have a little bit more detailed discussion, even specific to maybe the topic that you might want to hear about tonight. So um, again, I do encourage that. I'm not going to read that because, um, again, it's out there in public, but it is available to you. So would any members of the public like to step forward? And please, as, as I said, I'll do our best. We can limit to the few minutes. Thank you. Uh, Eric Grace, 1128 Elm Court. I'm coming to thank the city and all the departments that work with us <clears throat> on March 30th, uh, 15th annual Cesar Chavez celebration. Um, we've been doing it for 15 years, uh, Catacall or now Main Street, and we've had different council members, different uh, department heads of the Parks and Rec, different police department chiefs, different fire department chiefs, and different city managers, and so on. Uh, but one thing that stays in common that you work with us to make it happen for a great event for our community and this year was no different from the time I started the application process at the Lions Center to working <coughs> with your department heads even though you have split time we were still able to get in I know she's very busy and then working with the city manager and then the council so I and the police department had an excellent meeting with them pre prior to the event the event went off with a very nicely for as far as the people were telling us and again, as part of the Cesar Chavez, the chairman of the, for 15 years of the Cesar Chavez celebration, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of you, the city council, city staff, and your staff members that closed the street, worked with us to clean up the park. We made sure it was ready the next day, and it was clean, I hope, to your satisfaction, and we hope we can do another 15 years. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Reyes. Uh oh. Yeah. Kate Apicola. Collab, um, 8th Street, at least the city of Raleigh's portion is almost done. I'd like to thank y'all. I've had the opportunity to drive it several times. Um, on behalf of the business owners there and their products, thank you. On behalf of all of the people who transit it. And now the folks who are going to be unhappy about it is all of those ho folks who make repairs on cars because they're not going to have a lot of business because of 8th Street. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all. <laughs> Thank you. How you doing? I'm Mike Morris. I'm one of the owners of uh, Brawley Quick Lane. And I am here to talk about our public safety and basically to plead with you guys that we need to help these guys out. And I know this is not bargaining time. I got that. But I've been doing a lot of research and um, been thinking a lot about the things that have happened in the last week or so around our town. And let's face it, guys, we don't live in a great place anymore. A great country, world, whatever way you want to put it. Um, I'm friends with some of these officers that can barely feed their families. And that isn't right when they are here to take care of us and take care of our businesses and take care of every one of you. I'd like to ask a question about Measure W that was put in November 17th, which was supposed to be for the police and fire fund. That was passed 66% by, by the people of this town. Well, as of November 6, 18, it froze the police department. That's number one. Number two, there's been some comments made that certain people don't get raises. Well, I'm holding a contract that says that's absolutely incorrect. So, I'm a business owner. I'm willing to pitch in. I'm willing to help these guys. They need our help. We have molesters. We have murderers. We have, every one of you, I'm sure, has kids here. Do you want to see this happen to our kids? No, we don't want to see this happen to our kids. So what as a community do we need to do to do this together instead of against each other? And that's a fair question, I think, for any businessman in this room. And, and you know, if it's a tax or if it's something to do, we need to do it. Unfortunately, Brawley's become anti-growth. Look at Imperial. Imperial's awesome. They have so much fun down there. They generate revenue. We could do that here. We don't. I've hit up certain council members before. No money. No money. No money. Well, it doesn't take money to pull people together. It takes people to pull people together. 
and and again I'm sorry to be up here saying it this way but when you have families that can't feed themselves that you protect that protect you every day stay up all night because we're 11 officers short sleep at their desks because they can't go home and take a nap because they're trying to uh, cover active murder cases you guys that's wrong that is absolutely wrong so I'm not here to negotiate I'm here to tell you that we want to be part of the help to help you negotiate and if it comes from us businesses or if it comes from us doing fundraisers or whatever nothing for many years is not the right answer cost of living's gone up their insurance has gone up we all know everything's gone up and to freeze their salaries for many years that's not right you guys that is not right as a, a community at all and Brawley we're supposed to be a together community okay that's what I got to say and uh, I'm gonna hand it off thank you Th thank you for your comments and I do encourage you to be I encourage you to be part of the budget process hi I'm Shannon Colas um, I'm here also on behalf of Brawley PD and I look around um, I know a lot of you personally and I just want you to know that I'm coming to you as a concerned citizen. Um, I'm not coming to you as, um, to complain. Um, I am a mother and I've made observations and so I just wanted to um, bring attention to what I've seen, um, that crime is on the rise, that um, if, if you look around, you see what's happening on the streets, um, you can see that we, did, we had murders, drugs seem to be on the rise. Um, and what I want to do is um, not talk at you, but I would like to even just have a conversation with you. Um, you guys know Brawley PD, um, they go above and beyond to prote protect all of us. They risk their lives every day. Um, they sacrifice for our families, which I know I'm grateful for, and I know all of you are too. Um, but there's been some concerns that have been brought to my attention recently. And I have to ask myself, how did we get to this point? And why why is this happening why is the process taking this long and just how how are there so many of us here how did we get to this point um, and so there have been a few things that have been brought to my attention um, and I'll just share briefly even just the um, the employment agreement between Rosanna and the city and um, I know Mike referenced that there has been a raise um, I, I know that she's, she was hired in 2011, and she started at 130000 and she gets $250 a month for her car, and then that also includes medical, oh. dental, life, and vision um, benefits. And she would also get a severance of $32,000. And then the raise um, was in March 2012. When the, fir the first year of June 2012 would be 136000 2016 would be 140,000, 2017 was 144,000, and 2018 the raise went up to 149,000. And then the severance would be 64,000. Um, so what I'm, I'm not here to negotiate, I just really wanna present the facts, and um, those are facts. And it's under my understanding that Brawley PD hasn't had a raise for 10 years. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. Um, okay, I, I mean, I'm, I'm can you elaborate? It's not true. It's, 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 again, we're in a negotiation process. I want to respect our PD personnel, all okay. stakeholders on this, so we have to stick to that. This is a public comment, so that's another thing. I'm going to discourage uh, council from engaging actively. So definitely, uh, Ms. Colas, I want Ms. Colas, I want to make sure you get the opportunity to speak, but um, it, it's, it's difficult because again this is public comment and right. there's many things I want to say that are actually not contrary you know in, okay. in terms of what you're saying the, the support again I'm going to reiterate this this council has absolute support um, for all of our men and women in uniform for what they do 24 7 365 I think many of you that know uh, a little bit about my background I have tremendous respect for that community mm -hmm. um, there's many that are part of our own PD that I've known long before they were even on the police department and certainly respect what they've become and what they are as professionals so with that just it's part of this is being respectful to them as well that right. we want um, we've, we've got to work through a process so I, I just respect that process right that's and that's why I'm standing here today because I do respect each of you 
and I do trust that you guys will do what's right for the men in uniform, the men that, the men and women that are sacrificing for um, our city. And it's just I'm very concerned because I know that we have a high turnover rate, we're low staffed, and the people that are putting their <coughs> lives on the line every day they're not able to make ends meet, and it's it's just not right. And um, I think that's why you see strong support here from the city, but. I do feel that if this negotiation carries on and if and if we're not heard that um, that you will see this you will see the city come mm -hmm. together on their behalf and um, you know Brawley we know how to um, put signs in our yard and and we will band together um, we'll, we'll be banding with you and that's the right. thing is that if, if we're if, if something like this were to be a public negotiation then you would you would see that the you know there's not a cavernous gap right. so with that but said why, but yeah. why is the process taking so long you know it's a process and it, it, it's a process that occurs every three years or every whatever the contract but do you, you, know, but do you see what I'm are. saying that, yeah. that it's been a 10-year period where we've had high turnover rates there in comparison to what Imperial cops are getting or all central cops are getting mm -hmm. why are we not there yet why why are we not on that level mm -hmm. and so that's I understand it's a negotiating process but at the same time I just want to point out that it's been a decade of of this um, this carrying on so I just I trust that you guys I have faith in you that we'll be able to come mm -hmm. to terms and do what's right for um, the, pe the people in uniform Thank, so, thank uh, you. You're more comments? Okay. 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 Sorry. All right. All. No, no, no. I, I appreciate that again. And, and again, I, I, I just echo, we're going to respect the process. Um, I wish it can go faster. Obviously, everyone right. wants resolution, but uh, we, we want to make sure that we're respectful of all of our men and women in uniform, um, not, not necessarily just narrowed to PD, but um, mm -hmm. all of our staff that uh, are right now in current negotiations. So. Right. And just one more thing. Yeah. I mean, it's important to note too that when we take care of them we take care of our city so when they're taking care of businesses are protected children are protected our families are protected our neighborhoods are protected so i do trust that you guys will do what's right for 100 percent agree thank you thank you Um, my name is Brooks Hamby. I'm a 23-year resident of the city of Brawley. I want to share with you two issues that at first appear unrelated, uh, but are critically tied together. These are of critical importance because they will have permanent effects on this community. The unsustainable growth model and developer handouts responsible for our city's perpetual lack of funds available to invest in our public safety officers. Tonight, this council is considering necessary increases in pay to retain police and fire. Yet the city is likely unable to fund these needed raises due to supposed financial constraints. The irony should not be lost that while the city of Brawley is unable to offer living wages to our officers and firefighters that keep us safe, it is also considering exempting an outside developer from over $2 million in fees and revenues that our city desperately needs. We understand that budgets are tight. What we do not understand is why we deny fair wages for public safety officers that live in our town while letting millions of dollars of needed funds slip through the city's fingers after cowing to the demands of wealthy developers. If the city of Brawley is unable to provide police and fire the wages they deserve, it is not out of tight-fistedness. Rather, it is the obvious result of ill-considered and irresponsible financial and land use planning that has weakened our city's ability to invest in things that matter most to the citizens of Brawley. Take, for instance, the nearly 500 acres of zombie developments scattered around the southern and eastern outskirts of Broadway, <coughs> of which the failed Latigo Ranch is one. Where this once productive land grew an abundance of crops, it instead grows tumbleweeds and blows emissive dust that is permanently out of use for agriculture ever again. These zombie developments are referred to as the living dead of the real estate market. Though uninhabited, the city is financially responsible for upkeep including the unused and crumbling streets, adding an additional burden to the city without tax revenue generated that is required to maintain these arrested developments. These excess entitlements must be addressed. Unfortunately, the solution for the so-called Latigo Ranch zombie subdivision will exempt the developer from millions of dollars in fees while at the same time saddling our police officers and firefighters with additional responsibility with little to no additional support, resources, or income. 
Up to this point, there has been little in the way of public engagement and outreach for the Latigo Ranch project, which does make sense because it not only offers no value to the current residents of Brawley, but it stretches thin resources even thinner. What you are being asked to do is give one developer a $2 million financial break to fix what another developer created and the city allowed. The city should not be in the business of subsidizing failed projects at public expense. Waiving $2 million in fees to this developer would be denying to the people of Brawley the resources needed to adequately support police and fire. The Latigo Ranch project and other income restricted property tax free developments that the city has already approved will further burden city services without the necessary revenue to sustain them. The most important aspect of our city life, like funding pro for police, fire and parks, get placed at the back of the line, while wealthy developers in the interest of economic development are moved to the front and offered fee exemptions, low interest loans, and other financial incentives. I do find it hard to believe that at a time when we cannot afford raises for police and fire, we can somehow claim that, bankrupt, that the bankrupting city of Brawley does not need $2 million from a developer. I'll finish with this. What is even more concerning is the sheer volume of zombie developments around Brawley. As I understand it, there are over 3,800 zoned and entitled empty lots in the city of Brawley. How many tens of millions of dollars will the city, if it creates this precedent, exempt profit-seeking developers from paying their fair share? Do we as a cash-strapped city not need those tens of millions of dollars? I think the uh, people behind me would disagree with that. Mm. Do we as a cash-strapped city um, to consider those projects like Latigo Ranch, a public service is foolish. It is manipulation of the market, pure and simple, in which the city zoned and entitled zombie developments that no one needed, and when they were left vacant for decades, now offers massive cash incentives to develop these sad dirt lots. This is not even the worst of it. If approved with these cash incentives, these decisions may trigger a tsunami of subdivisions that the community has not been asked if it wants and cannot afford to likely adequately staff and pay the needed public safety. Even worse, in the event that the developer is unable to secure government funds from the IID to underground the Bass Canal, it may very well put up an even worse blight, a chain link fence collecting trash and rust rather than paying the needed full cost of undergrounding. The city of Brawley cannot afford to subsidize unsustainable growth and offer handouts to wealthy developers at the expense of public safety. In sum, the city of Brawley has a big revenue problem, simply because we keep adding new expenses and reducing net revenues. We should be addressing why sales tax, which makes up the bulk of our declining revenues, has declined year over year for two decades. Please. Stop giving away freebies to short-term profit-motivated developers and start funding needed public services like police and fire. Reconsider past approvals and failed zombie subdivisions. Open up the process for greater participation rather than passing four months late budgets with little public oversight to prioritize police and fire instead. If not, the public will respond with pol political solutions to these problems in November 2020. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Next uh, speaker, come on up. All right. Let's see. Oh, we got one more. Good evening, my name is Dee McBroom Cato, and I am, I was born and raised, and I still live in Brawley, California, and I want to welcome the new officer, and I am so thrilled that he is joining us, and I was noticing he had two young daughters, and I sure hope that they will be attending a local school, preferably Phil Swing School, <laughs> because that is where I am the academic coach at currently. And I wanted to um, invite all of you to join us Saturday. We are having a beautification day at Phil Swing from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 noon. And we would love to see all of you, as well as all of you, there. And we are accepting donations of flowers and whatever you think um, a school would need. I know that Barbara Worth has had several beautification days, and Witter has also, and so Phil Swing is this Saturday. So I would like to um, encourage everyone to join us. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. All right. 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you uh, for the public. I think this is an important, um, maybe even arguably one of the most important parts of the meeting. Um, again, um, some of the issues that were brought up will be will continue to be issues. So I do encourage you to continue to attend um, our our meetings. There are two regularly scheduled council meetings as well as uh, the budget workshop. I don't know if we made some schedules available. Yes. Um, so if if you do uh, leave any time during this evening, make sure you do get that, and we highly encourage. Uh, participation and being part of the process so thank you everyone for uh, being a part of that um, we're going to move on to the next item which is item for the consent agenda these items are approved in one motion council members or members of the public may request consent items to be considered separately or at a time determined by the mayor do we have a motion to approve so the consent we second. have a motion we have a second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed seeing none motion carries take us to item five Item five, this is a continued public hearing. Uh, we moved the date from last uh, week, Tuesday, to tonight. Um, this is a modification, a discussion of modification of approval for Latigo Ranch, TM05-01, major subdivision. Backup material are pages 26 through 119 in the, the council packet. And we'll begin with a staff presentation. I think uh, given the turnout tonight, what I'm going to do is ask both our city engineer and development services director to maybe come up to the podium. And I'll begin with an opener from, uh, from, okay. from the seat, just in the interest of not crowding the area. And uh, Mr. C.S., if I could please have you up at the podium as well. Thank you. Uh, the Letigo Ranch tentative track map was approved by the city uh, in June of 2005. The tentative tract map consists of two units and a total of 268 single-family residential lots. The final map for Unit 1 was recorded in November of 2005 with the associated improvement plans. Uh, unit 1 contains 113 single-family residential lots and is generally located in the northern half of the Latigo Ranch subdivision. A total of 18 single-family residential units have been constructed to date, which are currently occupied. And I believe we do have a number of uh, our local residents here in the audience this evening. Uh, the previous developer and current owner is uh, McMillan Homes. Uh, McMillan did not uh, complete the required off-site improvements for unit number one. Off-site improvements for unit one yet to be included are yet to be completed include a portion of Western Avenue, a portion of South Imperial Avenue, landscaping of the retention basin, and Wildcat Drive from South Western Avenue to South Imperial Avenue. Uh, per the final map, Wildcat Drive improvements include the undergrounding of the Best Canal and development of a green belt adjacent to Wildcat Drive. Unit 2 is currently entitled through November of 2021 and contains 113 residential units. No final map or improvement plans have been submitted to date for unit number two. Brawley Investment Ventures, uh, represented by Mr. Coyne here this evening, is currently in escrow and proposing to resume development activities within the subdivision. Uh, he is seeking relief to certain conditions uh, that are the subject of tonight's public hearing. Uh, this particular set of, uh, of, of conditions of approval were presented on a prior date before the City of Brawley Planning Commission. This was March 6, 2019. Uh, the Planning Commission held a public hearing, received public input, uh, and then took action uh, to uh, consider the request for modification proposed by Mr. Coyne. Uh, what you have before you this evening is recommendations from the Planning Commission, and that is contained in the staff report. If any members of the audience are interested in the backup documents, we do have them here for uh, your reference. Uh, one of the major features that was discussed uh, at the hearing and uh, among uh, city departments was with reference to the open canal and uh, the desired construction and completion of Wildcat Drive. Uh, the City of Brawley has met extensively with uh, Mr. Coyne to explore reasonable changes to the project approach uh, over many months. Uh, staff have approached the to topic with as much pragmatism as we can to assemble a package 
for council's consideration this evening. Uh, the staff recommendation includes uh, an offset of approximately $2 million uh, in fees, and we're happy to walk through what uh, those fees consist of. Uh, one of the most significant includes uh, providing uh, relief to certain improvements on Wildcat as the result of the city successfully securing grant funds from outside sources. So uh, approximately a million dollars has to do with the construction of Wildcat from its current termination to uh, South First Street. So uh, just for clarification, yes. this is Wildcat Road that's been talked about for many years as a key artery for potential retail economic development all along, yeah. especially toward the Walmart yes. um, area. Okay. Correct. So uh, we were successful in applying and securing uh, federal funds in order to achieve that first leg. What would remain after the city's completion of the CMAC funded project would be First Street to uh, South Imperial Avenue slash Dogman Road. So j again, for clarification, these um, monies being handed out that maybe have been referred to by certain members of the public, these are actually um, some grant opportunities that we can take advantage of to further and get moving with the Wildcat discussion and development that we've been talking about. Just Correct. for clarification. Whether okay. this uh, project this evening moves to get, moves forward or not, yeah. the city will be performing the improvements to the first leg of Wildcat. What is the subject matter of the offset is the ability to charge back the applicant for the grant funds that we're applying Understood. to the improvements. Okay, so that's 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 approximately a million dollars of the two million dollar package. Uh, the a larger, uh, uh, significantly uh, a significant portion of the remainder has to do with giving credit for Wildcat Drive when constructed. So there are many features to a development impact fee tied to a residential unit. What we are proposing in the strategy is to take the portion that applies to streets. And instead, because the developer, whether it's this one or a future one, would uh, have responsibility for construction of, of Wildcat, Wildcat has a regional uh, significance to the city as a whole. So what we propose is a relief for that streets portion. And I, I can go into greater detail as desired by, by the council. Uh, the request for consideration of uh, changes to the conditions of approval are to provide the applicant, uh, Mr. Coyne, with the clarity needed to make a final decision regarding the purchase of the remaining lots in unit number one and unit number two. Uh, so uh, included in the backup, and again, I'm happy to share copies of uh, that document with uh, any member of the public here this evening. Uh, a series of recommendations were first presented to the Planning Commission. Uh, the Planning Commission considered staff recommendation as well as received input from the public. Uh, and at the end of that meeting, uh, they also had a set of recommendations that are included uh, in the backup. For the record, uh, staff did recommend uh, the amendment of conditions of approval number 17, 23, 24, and 25 in your packet and a total uh, relief package of $2,118,000 in developer expenses, provided that Wildcat Drive is improved to city standards, including undergrounding of the Best Canal. What became a subject of uh, vigorous debate and discussion in the Planning Commission was really uh, the future of the Bryant uh, Canal and the <coughs> timing associated with undergrounding and ultimate improvements. Uh, what the Planning Commission uh, did act to do on March 6th uh, was propose uh, for the Council's consideration a more generous, uh, what I would describe as a more generous relief package. And if uh, Council would like, I can walk through what those features were or simply note for the record that they're on page 26 of the backup. I think we're good with the note unless Council has a different view. No. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's in our package. Um, at this time, I would like to turn to both Gordon and Guillermo to give them an opportunity to offer any additional information with reference to the overview of the project and uh, the, uh, the action that's before the City Council here this evening. Would you like to add anything, gentlemen? Not this, unless you have any questions or what we elaborate on any of the points. 
And, and I think we'll have some good opportunity to do that. So unless council has any questions right now at the outset, maybe we can move forward with the next item, open the public hearing. Okay. All right. Very good. Thanks for the high level overview. Um, again, this has been many, many, many months and lots of uh, not just staff time, but I think a lot of stakeholders have been involved. Um, and with that, I want to um, move to open the public hearing. And I know we have members of the public, so. Um, oh. Yeah, you know what I can do? Just right, so it could be right at the top of that. So with the public hearing, but um, Mr. Coyne, do you want to uh, just again, if you could keep it to high level? Because I think a lot of the discussions have occurred. <laughs> so sure. maybe a recap. Good evening, Marty Coyne, uh, representing Latico. Uh, I think what I'd like to start off tonight, listening to the gentleman speak about Latico Ranch and what's going on with the city and police and fire. Um, this is a project that can bring the city of Raleigh back to life. Um, the way I look at it, I've learned in my 40 years in business, if you're not growing, you're shrinking. Um, this particular project will bring income, I believe, not only to the general fund, but also funds that you need to continue your growth in your water and sewer and services, et cetera. Uh, for example, to the police department uh, and other services, uh, there's a CFD on this project. When built out, it'll bring in about $273,000 a year annually with a 3% growth continually. Um, all in all, um, with, with the, this project sitting stagnant for the last 12 years, the city has missed the opportunity to bring in income and miscellaneous types of fees of $10 million gone and lost if the city chooses not to do business or continue that project moving forward my calculations show the city will lose revenue in the approximation of 15 million dollars so in, within a 10-year period that's a million and a half dollars a year so whether it's cfd water and sewer fees uh billing permit fees all those kind of things that go into the basket and that's what i mean about a city shrinking rather than growing you need a population base you need growth i wasn't part of the problem and, and since I was before the Planning Commission, I came up with a good word, um, and I use this in the city of Imperial because we're working on a project there. This is a rescue project. We're here to turn it around and make something of a disaster and a mess, partly caused by the economy and other issues beyond that. Um, and I would, you know, when we go to these projects in other cities, we're welcome because they know growth creates more population, sales tax, jobs, all those kind of things. We worked for a long time on this project, 11 months. Or in some cities, I only work for a month to get to as far as we've been today. We feel um, we would like to be part of Brawley. This may only be the first part of it. As most of you know, we're in the retail business. Bring sales tax dollars. That's an option in the future. We feel that some of these revenues, besides jobs and opportunities, uh, create other opportunities within your city, other retail opportunities. So a little young man, gentleman that was up here saying negative, 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 I don't th quite think he gets the big picture. Um, there hasn't been a lot of growth and activity in the city of Raleigh for a long time. And our goal is to bring revenue in. When this project is built out, the approximate tax assessor's value on this project would be, be about $75 million. The city gets to keep 28% of that 1% Prop 13 tax money that goes in. Besides all the other stimulated parts, again, retail sales, et cetera. Um, so all I ask is the audience be a little bit more uh, educated of what a development does. We've heard stories that, um, well, call it what you'd like, but it's the truth. So, so our goal was um, times are changed. And we don't have people in the city of Raleigh or any place in Imperial County buying $450,000 homes where developers can go in underground canals and do all those types of things that I uh, was able to do in 2006 before the economy went bust. So we, we examined this uh, many years in, 12 years later, there wasn't a single national developer, public builder, any investors that was interested in this project because it was encapsulated with 2006 conditions that don't fit today's market of how, in the housing market of $250,000 that your citizens can afford to buy. So we thought we'd take a chance at it. We're here before you today. We have other projects in other cities. Um, maybe some of the public that's not aware who we are, where we come from. I own Coin Power Sports. We developed a bank up Bowling Alley that now is owned by a nonprofit, put people to work. We create revenues in other cities by means of sales tax. Our little retail center that just recently opened up with a Starbucks and a Habit Burger, and we're building a Panera Bread, has created 200 jobs in that retail center. I can't 
give you the amount of sales tax dollars that will be brought into the city. And like I say, this is our first time doing business in the city of Brawley. It's totally up to the city council where they'd like to go with it. We've crunched our numbers. We know where we need to be. And there seemed to be a little bit of concern of this developer can go out like the rest of the developers. We're local. We have a track record. Uh, most of the people sitting on this side of the audience is either my contractors, their employees. We are responsible. I have over 100 employees that work for my different companies. We are responsible for paying a lot of mortgages, a lot of rents, and putting the food on the table for a lot of families. So we're serious about what we do. We know how to do it. We've turned many subdivisions around, uh, especially recently in the city of Imperial. Um, in, we have worked with El Centro, and we have other communities like Calexico that would love to have us come down there. So if this is a project meant to be, I'd be more than happy to answer some questions. I know in the spirit of time, I've had a little presentation I can put together for you. I do want to say we spent three and a half hours in, a, in, a, in your planning commission's meeting. Very complicated project. Um, but after three and a half hours, we worked through it. We got a 7-0 vote. Two of your planning commissioners happen to be real estate professionals that are brokers. So they got where we were coming from, meaning the, the financial challenges of this subdivision and the market conditions that exist today. So after those three and a half hours, and we got some of the other planning commissioners to understand where we're going with this, again, we ended up with a 7-0 vote. We actually came back for a ratification two weeks later. Still was a 7-0 vote, and of course the city council is the end result. Um, so you have track records, we have our contractor stand behind us, we've never bailed on a project, we've built communities, we've built businesses, we've created income, we've made cities look well, and the question is, are we welcome uh, in the city of Raleigh? Um, if we are, we'd love to be here, we'd love to help the city grow and get back on its feet, maybe where it'd like to be. Not saying it's in a bad place. Um, and if you allow me just a minute, I can check over a couple of my notes. 11 months challenge, we've gotten there. One of the things in the Planning Commission, we had some of the residents out there, you know, they signed petitions. We want that place cleaned up regardless of, of the best canal being underground. I know the city is tight on funds, so we went to the ID, of course, and it's a, a safety risk. Walmart being there, families in the area, existing homes. Well, with us coming in uh, and, and the help and support of IID, it's our intent to put up a half a million dollars, which is 25% of the shared underground those canals. If I go away, where is that half a million dollars going to come from? Is that canal going to be open for the next 20 years? Those are the questions that the city council has to you know, acknowledge and also the people that live in the area. Uh, I mentioned the audience and our support. In my, May, in my October 18th letter to staff, Planning Commission, City Council, it went into detail of our track record, the income we can bring to the city of Brawley, not, without even speaking about retail and the future there. Um, I was told we can't do to educate uh, the, the public tonight to replay our, what do you call it, uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. um, but I hopefully have, you guys have gone through the packet and you as a council understand all about it. Um, I, I guess the thing that you probably need to know, the major points on this subdivision, was Wildcat Road, and we have a provision for that. Originally, when I came in and asked for my modified conditions, I says, you have 95 finished lots out there. I need to go in, create revenue, and build out these homes in these 95 finished lots that have been deteriorating out there for the last 12 years. So there's been give and take between staff, myself, planning commission, that we agreed that the certificate of occupancies and building permits would be issued on only 50. And the reason I need that 50 is to be able to take 100% of those proceeds and put them into Wildcat Road, finishing that, and undergrounding your canal, which is your number one wish. So that means talking about risk, we're going to work, making the investment, taking a couple $3 million before I put a dime in any of our pockets and do all those improvements that you guys have been dreaming about for 10 or 12 years. And I'm going, how can that be a bad deal? And with that, then it's like, okay, it's time to get everything else going. We wanted to defer some, some roads to nowhere, which we're calling Legion Road. That dead ends, of course, because it doesn't go out all the way to Highway 86. Western Avenue, that's been deferred since Walmart's been built. Uh, you know, those are reasonable requests based on what the city needs. We're looking underground in the canal, making homeowner safety, you know, safe out there with their children in, in Wildcat Road. And then the last thing, but not least, is, is uh, on, on the key points, is the improvement security. Um, 
I know the city's struggling with this. I don't want to say they're behind the times a little bit, but other cities are using, exercising other options. Uh, what I've learned on bonds, somewhat, you guys have learned more because you've been burned on some, um, is bonds are not the way to go. Bonding companies went out of business in tough times. They sue, they negotiate, they don't want to pay. For the last three, four years, I've been doing, and other builders in the city of Imperial, have been doing deeds in lieu of bonds. It sounds scary, but what I wanted to present before you tonight, and your city manager said I could not do bring anything new, within the last two weeks, I have finished two subdivisions, 62 houses and 62 finished lots, 64, take that back, okay? I have before me, but I couldn't present it to you tonight, a reconveyance from the city and a letter from the public services director, which is Othon Mora, and signed by the city manager saying, Mr. Coyne, we relieved you of your deeds, the deeds on your property, you've done a fantastic job, and all the improvements were done according to plan. So I wanted to present that to give you a little bit more security because I know there's been edginess of never doing it before. Um, so I, I hope you take a second look at that. I know it's different, but I think that's a way of the future. What I found out with McMillan, of course, one of the reasons they wanted to just dump the property after all these years, do you realize what they were paying for that $6 million bond? $236,000 a year. That's what their fee, or their, the, the fee was to carry that bond on for the city. So we carry debt, construction loans, we do all those things, and then you have a fee on top of that. The market just doesn't carry that, of course, these days. Um, the other thing that, that uh, took place besides that is that's deed in lieu of um, with subordination, which we do in the city of Imperial. Just hear me out, and I'll be done in just a minute. Is you end up with a partner, which is a bank, okay? And they use a fund control, so months, funds cannot be spent, you know, feverishly anywhere. You have an inspector, the bank makes sure it gets done, and then the fund control funds the subcontractor to make sure those improvements are done. It's actually better than a bonding company. You just haven't experienced it. And so that's how we are doing Imperial. Uh, I built over 200 units in the last year and a half in Imperial, guys, and not a single one. And you can look at your building permits being pulled here. So I, I suggest whether I stay or why I go, you take a hard look at your options to help you know, solve some of those. Um, miscellaneous notes, you already know, um, I look at the cost to do Wildcat Road, $1.2 million. Us coming up with 25% to help the city with the IED underground in the canal for safety reasons, $600,000. So $1.8 million out of those first 50 lots, I asked for 95. Putting an extra lane in at, cost at Dogwood Road, $250,000. Western Road with a water line underneath it, another quarter of a million dollars. Legion Road, $275,000. So it gives you an idea, you know, as far as all in, all committed. Uh, if we go in and do this deal, we're all in and all committed. Um, just to let you know, this is not small potatoes. This, this is major. So for us being local, we're not a public developer. We have a track record. I've got a couple of gentlemen, my engineer, my project manager, has been in business 40 years. We are good at turning failed projects around, and that's exactly what this is. So we have some closing statements, but let me just hit my final closing statement, and then if you have any questions, be happy to answer them for you. <coughs> Excuse me. We are ready to obtain ownership and go to work revitalizing Lagco Ranch and bringing the subdivision back to life again. Tonight, I ask the City Council uh, that it accepts and approves the Planning Commission's recommendations, one through eight, along with adding three additional modifications as listed below as these simple requests were just simply overlooked during the March 6th Planning Commission involved with the heavy stuff, which is indeed in lieu of and, and undergrounding. Um, Mr. Coyne. Uh, yes. Okay, I, did, I just, for clarity, we, it's going to be very important that um, Council's operating off of the staff recommendations that are in front of us, as well as, and obviously, the additional kind of, over, kind of overview, I mean, again, albeit helpful, um, we can drill in if we do have any questions when we kind of get to the discussion part, but I want to make sure we're not entering new proposal or conditions of any sort into tonight's discussion. So I just want to make that clear. So you were going to proceed with some additional? Yeah, the additional was a couple simple items. Okay. Um, right. One is, and I believe one of the staff members or city engineer agreed to it, reserves the right to value engineer the existing plans acceptable to the city because in 12 years, specs 
on, on underground pipe and everything has changed, but of course acceptable to the city engineer. So uh, it just gives us the option to take a look at it. I did a, a project in the city of Imperial and, and there was a three quarter of a million dollars difference in materials based on 12 years ago and today. Um, the other thing I pointed out, just need to be of record as I've said before, we can't fix this subdivision like it's, we're starting new today. And you may have heard it before, just one on the record, a developer agrees to fix and repair phase one up to the standards of a 13-year-old subdivision. Yes, you have stolen fire hydrants, and yes, you have, uh, what do you call it, blight all over the place and lots of repairs, but it'll never be a brand new subdivision again. And then, if I may or may not, um, I just want to point out one other thing. The last thing is, is parks. And we, we've had a little bit of discussion, I guess, in parks. And so after talking to the city manager, you know, it really had me confused. What's the right way? What's the wrong way as far as doing parks and parkways? And do you pay your fees? Do you do it in lieu of? Uh, and of course, I was told you got to do it all. And so I thought, you know, it's time for me to pick up the phone. So I call city manager in, in uh, Calexico, Mr. David Dale. How, how do you work your park program with developers? Well, you either pay the fee or you develop, but not both. So then I thought, oh, let's call City of El Centro and find out. Talk to Angel Hernandez, planner. Norma, uh, Norma was not in. Less than 50 lots, you pay your impact fees or install improvements, but not both. And anything over 50 lots, it's negotiable. So then I went to the City of Imperial, and same thing. A phone more community services director oversees all the departments. Their comment and their policy is either complete park improvements or pay park impact fee, but not both. And last but not least, I went to the county. I had a major project in the county going. I spoke with Mr. Jim Minnick. Most of you know him. I said, Mr. Minnick, um, how do you handle your subdivisions, your developers, with park fees? He says, we collect fees, but we credit back for any park improvements installed by the developer. Mm -hmm. Just want to plant that seed. So to wrap this up, before you ask any questions and decide which direction you'd like to go, you have to ask yourself, Probably been 10 people, if not more, looking at buying this project over the last 12 years. No takers. I like challenges. My motto is uh, failure is not an option. And we never have failed in any project, and we'd like to make the same with this project. What happens if I go away? Council decides, listen, this young man thinks subdivisions are negative, not going to bring any money, all those kind of things. Uh, chances are that subdivision is going to sit for another 12 years. You lose that other $15 million that I told you that would, would come in because of that subdivision over the next 12 years. Uh, you can't get back what you've already lost. If this makes it, if the city really reflects the attitude that they don't want these kind of things to happen, then the other thing that can happen in speaking with the seller, you know what, we've had enough, let it go to tax sale. Well, today, the property taxes are paid. So it'll take five years before they come totally delinquent, probably another two years to make it to auction. City has the right, first right, to buy the property, right, from the state or, or, or the collector. Then you're an owner anyway. The other option is I come back in and buy it for less than I'm buying it from the seller, and you're dealing with me seven years from now, except you got seven more years worth of buy. Or, or then we're right back to square one where we're at today. And uh, the other way, there's litigation. Be the seller, or I just buy it and say, you know what, we'll work it out. We'll hire attorneys and fight it out. And at the end of the day, we can mitigate, and we can litigate. And at the end of the day, don't we all know the only people that are going to win on this is the attorneys. So, so you really have to ask, you know, the revenue that's out there to come into the city, and a lot of it into the general fund, <coughs> And other agencies, I heard in one of the meetings, hey, we need some new sewer. You know, the capacity fees are like, I don't know, a million dollars or two million dollars on this project. Um, but anyway, I conclude my presentation to you, see so if you have any questions. Um, I will tell you, we have plenty of things to do. Uh, we'd like to take a shot at Brawley. We think you're a good challenge, but it may be beyond our challenge. Thank, so. thank you, Mr. Coyne. And, and, and obviously, you'll, you'll be here if we do have any questions. So I do want to make it um, official. And if we could, I, I want to obviously um, open, and as I've already mentioned, this is all part of the public hearing, so I want to keep that open. Any members of the public that wish to come up and address the council, please do so. Over here. Mr. Hamby, yes, on, on that side, please. Yeah, sorry. Mr. Coyne, if we clear, yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Yeah, and then we'll we need to come back up. 
Thank you very much. If you're looking for a, a good example of a hostage negotiation, this is a pretty good one. Coming into a room, basically threatening the city with litigation if you don't comply with Mr. Hamby, do, do me one favor, please. I, I'm going to allow you to speak. You know, just if we could, just I, I really want to keep the decorum. Stay on point. You know, you, you've, you've, if you've got some um, great points to make, please do so. But I, if we could refrain from that part, so please. It's a bit of an opener after a pretty extensive filibuster here. But I first want to start off with the, the pretty offensive comment that was directed at me. And if we're talking about what kind of things we want to welcome into the city of Raleigh, calling a 23-year resident of this city a little young man is pretty, pretty underappreciative of, mm -hmm. of those who actually have a vested interest having lived in this town for 23 years rather than an invested interest which is going to cause long-term financial consequences to the city. What do I mean by that? If you approve this whole very large subdivision, things will look pretty good for 25 years. You'll be hit with an instant flush of cash, CFDs money coming in, things look pretty good. But what happens when I'm at the age of 58 years old, most everybody in this room is retiring in Florida or wherever, what am I going to see? I'm going to see a city that has sewers, that has um, streets crumbling, all at the same time. That's going to be a big, that impact to the city of Raleigh all at the same time. I understand that this is a great economic development opportunity in the moment, but the unfortunate fact is I'm going to be living this, with this 25 years from now when the necessary improvements are going to be needing to be made by moving into this direction a departure from gradual and incremental growth and instead engaging in this post-World War II style large housing development track um, that has proven to be financially disastrous to cities. One example of this is if you look at the city of Imperial, we all have a very good idea that things are bustling and, and, and as Brawley residents, we tend to be envious in some ways. But in many ways, that's just the veneer and the facade, the activities and so forth that are going on. But what you don't realize is that the population of the city of Imperial in the year 1990 was 4,200. In 22, excuse me, in 2020, that population will be 20,000 people. That population has pentupled in a period of just uh, a little over 20 years. What are the consequences of that? If you talk to some of the city council members who are growing, have growing concern about what the direction of that city is and the skyrocketing growth, you'll see that the city cannot financially keep up with that. If you talk to some of the police officers in the city of Imperial, as I have, they'll tell you about what the new models of growth have meant for them. It means they're driving, trying to figure out where the new subdivisions are, trying to navigate through that city that's just uh, growing like a mushroom. And the unfortunate fact of that is, is that's taking a huge consequence, not only in the long term, but in the short term as well, uh, where the police officers cannot keep up with the current rate of growth. And in addition to that, they're not being compensated at the proper rate because there is so much growth happening with the same amount of police officers and that's the exact same situation we're going to see here. And the final point I want to make um, is this. I'd ask that you please consider the long-term impacts of this. I understand there's going to be some great economic development opportunities, the short-term flush of cash, but at the end of the day, is this really going to be a significant great achievement for the city of Raleigh, adding in 100 acres of monopoly style houses that will be carpet bombed all east of, of the Walmart is that a sustainable model? I argue it is not. There is a growing movement within urbanism generally that finds that's not the case. And this is not going to do any favors for our police. We're going to be operating on the same amount of revenue, property tax, as was mentioned here earlier. There's some $75 million we're going to be receiving in a short period of time. But the real number that's not being addressed there is what happens, so that's the revenue coming in, what are the expenses going out? What are the expenses in terms of police? What are the expenses in terms of parks? Are we getting $75 million of expenses for $75 million of revenue, or is it more? And if you look at the different models, and I'll finish with this point, between residential, commercial, industrial, and other uses, we are very heavy on residential. We're not building enough in our business here in Brawley. It's very nice to do residential in the short term, but the fact of the matter is the question that we are not addressing is for the past 20 years, since I was three years old, the city of Brawley has been declining in sales tax year after year after year. That was discussed in the budget meeting, as I recall, watching online back in May. Okay. It's actually not true, but 
Yeah. Well, I, I <laughs> did see the number back at the beginning of this 20-year mm -hmm. period, and then to today, it's gone like this, mm -hmm. downward and to the right. Sales That's tax good. revenue? Sales tax That's revenue. Not true. So. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll conclude with that, but say mm -hmm. this, that there's long-term consequences to what appear to be very short-term mm -hmm. Benefits and, uh, and and we don't want to be sorry with the results. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Hamby. Kevin Smith, six thirty West K Street, Brawley. Been a sixty nine year resident of Brawley. Mr. Coin is your guy. You need this guy. He'll do what he says. He'll rescue a, a broken subdivision. He's done it before. He's a great guy. I support him. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Eric, Eric Reyes again. Um, I guess the question is, yes, we do want Mr. Coyne to build homes. At what price to the city? Um, we're giving him a $2 million uh, waiver of some fees that the city would not have received anyway. High, the school is not building their school there. That's one of the monies that you're going to have there. Obviously, they're building out here. And, but we've been through this again. <clears throat> we've been through this. If you look at the new housing developments, right when the <clears throat> housing market burst, you look at the houses on Mayland, <clears throat> Mayland South, you know, that was going to be a great development. The city bent over backwards for them. It's not there. Look at the houses on Best Road, uh, east of Best Road, abandoned. Uh, another great development that was going to save our city. Um, yes, we do want development, Mr. Coyne, but you have to pay your fair share. We have given we have given you a break here. We are already under, and I'm going to blame past city councils for this because I was in the city I was on the city planning commission. We passed a uh, impact fees. <coughs> Impact fees that were supposed to be implemented over a seven-year term, we only did it once. Only one of those impact fees uh, augmentations was set. So we're way behind in collecting enough. It, look at Imperial. Look, why did, why did they raise their water rates in Calexico? They built tremendous amounts of houses and tripled and quadrupled the water and sewer fees on the citizens, a retroactive tax because they didn't charge developers a proper amount of money to put in the sewer lines for the uh, police department, for the fire department, and so on. The, a developer has to pay their fair share of the cost. We want you here, Mr. Coyne. Pay your fair share. Thank you. Thank you. Just in short, of course, nobody's mentioned schools tonight. We also respect police and fire. Those units I mentioned we built in the city of Imperial. I wrote a check for almost $2 million of the city of Imperial, almost $600,000 the local school district. Uh, and just a couple of sh short projects in a very short period of time. Um, so, so, you know, we have, we've done the math and we understand, and, and I don't think any of these people ever built homes before, but, the, but, mm -hmm. but we do bring revenue in short term and long term and support the schools, and some of that revenue will go towards police and fire and public safety. Thank you, Mr. Coyne. Um, any other comments from the public? Please come forward. Good evening, council members. My name is Robert Ibarra, and I am a resident of uh, Latigo Ranch. Not a zombie. I'm alive. <laughs> 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 but it does, it does look desolate to where, where I live. It does. And you know what? It, it does need improvement. And you know what? I commend Mr. Coyne. I, I did that at the, the other meeting we had. I was here for the three hours. And believe me, it was a long three hours. And I do commend him. He came, and he wants to do business in Brawley, which I commend. I mean, we want to see Brawley grow. I've been here 45 years, but I do live there, and I know that canal is not going to get covered. They're going to put a fence up. I do have children that walk around there. When they do open up First Street, my kid currently goes to the Brawley Elementary School District. Mrs. Cato, you know, give her props, you know. <laughs> he goes to Witter. Right now, my son comes on a bus because there's no way to get to the school. He has to walk down Dogwood Road which is kind of dangerous. You all know you guys drive down there. So when they do open that up, that first shoot up, my son is not going to get bust anymore. He's going to have to walk home. And there's a canal there. And that's my concern. I know Mr. Coyne came up with, you know, the 25-25 split with the IAD. But I, I don't know. They didn't mention tonight. We're on a list. It's not going to happen like today. It ain't going to happen next year. It's not going to happen anytime soon. We're on a list. It might happen within 10 years or who knows. 
But I'm just saying, you know, I know we're at impasse. It's about making money. He said it already. He's in it for retail or something like that. But you know, at what cost of my children, cost of everybody, anybody else's children, we're going to have an influx of traffic there. We're going to have construction. I know. I want to see growth. I do. But at what cost? Not of my children. Not of my neighbors. Um, not of my neighbors' families' cost. I'm just saying, taking consideration, you know, we are giving a break. But you know, somebody, he, he needs to pay for it, or somebody needs to pay for that canal. Cover it up before we start construction because it is going to make a mess. Like he, he said, I'm going to build 50,000 homes. If it doesn't happen, where's the canal going to be? Still going to be there with the fans. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just looking Wait. out for everybody's safety, my children's safety, and everyone's safety. Thank you for the night. Thank you. Listen to me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Coyne, if you could, I, I know, I'll correct the record. I'll correct the record. Yeah, if, if um, I, I want to, I just want to prevent, make sure that we, we allow ample Absolutely. public hearing. J just related, though, uh, we have Mr. Mike Pacheco here from IID that maybe mm -hmm. can make a comment. We've been working very, very hard uh, with IID and as mm -hmm. the city staff has to see if we can appease the residents I, out there. I, I, I understood. understood. So, Mr. Pacheco, if you, if you would like it as a public hearing, sure. Yeah, Mike Pacheco with the IID. Yeah, I'm just here to answer any questions that you guys might have. Super. So, um, yeah, so we're working with the, our board on um, with this project. Uh, unfortunately, we canceled our, our IID board meeting last week due to some board members being out of town. Mm -hmm. Um, they did ask us for some additional information on the on the best pipeline and some of the funding that we have going for these kind of projects. So we are bringing that back to the board Tuesday. Um, so that's really the the only update I can give you. Uh, other than that, that, I know Director Cardenas is very very involved in this, and so he's the one that's really uh, ramrodding this project and looking for any possibility of funding this with the with the city. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Richard. And I appreciate you being here if we do have No you know, problem. I, you know, could, I, usually so. the IID Thank meetings you. are very exciting. Yep. This one is too. So Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll disappoint you. Members of the public, we're in public hearing. Please step forward. Any comments? Hi. Good evening. My name is Monica Torres, and I'm also a resident at Latigo Ranch. And I also came to the three and a half hour long planning commission meeting on very eventful. Um, I'm just here to speak on behalf of the residents of the community and I, I also welcome growth uh, in, in our area for the city of Raleigh. I've lived there 12, just over 12 years and, and it is, we got the tumbleweeds, we got all that going on. We also have little children. Um, I'd love to see it improved but I also am concerned about the entry points to the community. Uh, right now we have one, it was established originally as a temporary entry point and that's what we've been working off of all these years. Um, with the plans to expand to add he's requesting additional 50 new homes what's the traffic going to look like there um, where's all that going to go what's going to happen to our area to our children playing in that area in addition to the canal I, I don't know what a, a fence is going to do even from as an eyesore if you want to compare it to what we have right now still definitely but I thought it was important that this community the people that live there and, the, and Latigo Ranch that we get an opportunity to speak and be heard as well that as much as we also want to see growth and we'd love to see it cleaned up we definitely want those things to be considered we'd like additional entry points immediately before those homes are are put up um, we do need that because if you're going to add additional traffic additional residents that is a, saf a safety point definitely okay. thank you very much for the comments All important. any other Members of the public, while we're in our open public hearing. Seeing none, what I will, unless there's somebody standing up, um, we will go ahead and I'm just looking toward our city attorney at this point. We can go ahead and um, unless someone's leaping out of their seat, we will um, close the public hearing and we will move to the next item under the same topic, which will be discussion and potential action of the council. At this time, this allows us to uh, deliberate, discuss everything that's been brought to the table over the past several, actually weeks, months. Um, and uh, much of this um, for the public's benefit has been um, very well documented in the staff recommendations in our, our, our council packets, which have been posted online. They're available. Um, for those of you that came in, grabbed a, a hard copy, you have the same, or, or at least you have the agenda. But if needed, we can certainly provide any other um, of the backup material that certainly um, is being discussed tonight. Um, with that, what I'd like to do is, is open it up to council um, for questions. We have uh, obviously all our experts here. Um, hey, you start with you. 
not just questions, it's just an opening comment to everybody. First, I'd like to thank you all for being here. I do appreciate the commentary that's been shared. This is a project uh, that's been uh, sitting vacant for quite some time. And Mr. Coyne has brought it before council for several months now. And, uh, you know, he's presented uh, before us multiple times. And I know this has gone before the Planning Commission. But uh, I do want to thank you all very much for participating and engaging yourselves in the process. I know sometimes, uh, especially when we're not saying something, it seems like there's not that engagement that you're expecting. But um, really, we're just taking, um, you know, in some cases, it's, it's uh, just information from the public <coughs> and, and gain, gaining your input. So. Uh, I think I speak for all of council, and I, I hate to put words in anybody's mouth, but I think I speak for all of council when I tell you that we listen to all comments, and those weigh just as heavily uh, from one perspective to the other. So it's not like uh, things are easily forgotten. And from my own perspective, just so you all know, um, I try to find middle ground for things. I, I try to uh, find solutions when, whenever problems exist. So. Um, you know, I take the, the, the commentary and my own questioning, my, the, the own questions, my own questions that I have, uh, my own concerns, and incorporate those into a solution. So we're going to, um, at this point, we're going to discuss the item. But I did want to open up, you know, just with that comment and sharing that uh, I, I know all of the council. We respect your opinions. I know sometimes they differ significantly, but uh, they're not, they don't go unheard. So anyway, that's just the opening comment. Thank you, Councilmember uh, Nava. Uh, Councilmember, if we want to, I'm sure we have some questions uh, between staff, we have the developer, um, I think all the expertise is in the room. Well, I, I do just want to say that uh, <coughs> I believe growth and development is important. I think we got to have a balance of uh, the right kind of residential and the right kind of commercial. I think we're lacking um, in, in commercial. And I hope that that can change. And, and I know Mr. Coyne uh, is talking about doing some of the stuff in Brawley that he's done in El Centro. Um, of course, you know, anything can happen. That remains to be seen. But um, I think we have to sometimes make decisions as a council that, that people are not going to like in the short term, um, that we may not even like in the short term, but that make a difference for our community 20 years, 30 years down the road. And I think that decisions have been made over the past decades that have gotten us to where we are, whether it's uh, a budget crisis or issues with the, the balance of development that we have. I hope that we can make the right decision in this case and um, some other big decisions that we have coming our way. I think, as, as uh, Council Member Nava said, you know, he's, he'll speak for everyone tentatively, but I would also speak for everyone tentatively and say, I think it's it's our goal to see our city improve. We know that um, we have some strengths, we have some weaknesses, there's always room for improvement. And um, I think it's all of our goal to see our city become a better city, um, whether it's partially through growth and partially through seeing our community members um, step up and take uh, more responsibility as we're starting to see kind of an upswell, an uprising, a, a grassroots movement of community members stepping up and, and, and wanting to participate more. I'm thrilled to see that. Um, but these are not easy decisions that we have before us, both with the budget and, and with this development. And so um, I hope you will all have patience and, and grace with us in that. Yeah. What, uh, thank you, Councilmember um, Hamby. And if I could just dive in, just kind of frame and get us moving here um, towards some potential action. and, and um, we, we, we've looked at that the two issues that I have raised and I think most of us at some point or another have on this project that are probably risk wise to the city the most important was number one the undergrounding of the canal so Mr. Pacheco again having you here again comforting kind of bringing back um, a little bit of the discussions that have already occurred a lot of work I think um, on, on the district's part in consideration of this project. So um, the canal issue being, um, uh, uh, the reason I mentioned that is number one, not only the safety factor, but we've talked a little bit about the importance of this project moving forward. Most of that's predicated on that barrier. That has been a barrier, whether it's Mr. Coyne or anybody else that would ever consider this project. So finding a solution for that 
in this day and age within the economic uh, environment that we've already framed up with some earlier topics, I think would be a huge win for the city. So I think something that, uh, if that, if that is a potent, an imminent part of this project, um, I, I, I want to make sure that is something that we, you know, that is certainly factored in um, as, as we further this tonight. The other issue is um, the security issue. I think that's come up, and Mr. Coyne obviously talked about, you know, um, really maybe the relevance of bonding today. Um, there's there's some other solutions that have been employed, and it's am amazing to me. So many times in the in this council chamber, I hear about um, citizens, whether you're from here or not, talking about Imperial. And here's a great example of this has been modeled in Imperial, where deed in lieu uh, of a bond has been used. So I think there's some consideration there, but I think what I would have an issue with is I want to make sure that at the end of the day that the city is not interested in owning developments. The city is not interested in owning, per se, properties. If we were, we would that, that would be a different strategic discussion. Our interest is, this, uh, is to do what we can to support developers, to do good developments, in this case, rescue a development that needs rescuing. Um, and if we can put something together that allows that to happen, and. And, and if anybody has any empathy whatsoever for the residents that have been living out there, um, should take a very serious consideration of what's sitting before us. And that's an opportunity to move this project that's been dormant, sitting for over a decade. And uh, those are the two issues I would like uh, basically address. If we can, as a council, come together on that. And I know there's others, many others, some of the um, conditions. But I want to open with that. If we can address those two uh, moving forward, I'm prepared to take action tonight. So, so with respect to the uh, undergrounding of the canal, I know it's been um, at least discussed with the IID between either staff or Mr. Coyne uh, to see if there is an opportunity um, to underground. And we, we, from my understanding, that the cost to underground is about $2 million uh, for the, the span of the area that needs to be undergrounded. Um, and, and considering the fact that Mr. Pacheco came up, I mean, I realize that there isn't a firm answer on, on how that's moving forward, but I would like to give some, um, some time for, for Mr. Coyne to pursue that, that uh, method of, uh, of uh, meeting that condition. Right, and so whether that's a time frame of, say, 60 days, and then we can, and, and that may be sufficient time. I'm not sure if it is um, to see if the IID. I was hoping to have some sort of response uh, as early as today or even sooner, uh, with respect to uh, the IID um, agreeing at least in in part to uh, finance part of that construction cost. But um, so that's one element of it. I think he's still required to put up. I think a quarter of the. The, the uh, cost of construction, am I, am I correct there? Right. Uh, it remains to be seen what level IID will fund the project. That will okay. be determined in their response to the city's request. It can be uh, at least the discussions to, be, to date have been anywhere from 25 to 50 percent okay. of eligible costs. And I, I would ask, I'm, uh, it doesn't mean we will not reach out to subject matter experts as we're going through this process, but if you could allow council, we'll work through these issues, get all our facts out on the table so we uh, know not only what we're discussing but potentially taking action on. So I appreciate that. Um, and you have an, an, another topic? Uh, well, that, that's one that of primary importance. I don't know how the rest of council feels, but with this, with respect to uh, the undergrounding, I feel firmly we need to make sure that that gets taken care of. And so I'll leave that up to the rest yep. of council to, to, to decide. But uh, the other matters are the matter of security. And so I know we've talked about bonding, and, and Mr. Coyne has mentioned, um, you know, his, his opposition to bonding. And I know we've considered other avenues. Um, but I think the undergrounding of the canal is one of significance, and if that isn't firmly uh, determined very soon, I think the bonding issue is going to become a non-issue, right? And so um, th those are of, of importance to me. I don't know how the rest of council feels about the other conditions that are being proposed to be changed, but those are items I think are very important in this process. Mm -hmm. And nobody speak it all at once, please. Oh, okay. I'm looking. I mean, yeah, it looks like there's. It looks like everyone actually yeah. wants to speak. I guess Guillermo so. wanted to yeah. say something. I'm going to grab this bottle. Yeah. Guillermo Sillas, uh, Public Works Director, uh, City Engineer. I would like just to make a comment uh, regarding what uh, Mr. Nava was mentioning about the undergrounding, the importance of the undergrounding of the canal. 
of course, that the main um, concern is safety. Um, the canal remaining open uh, includes additional uh, items to consider. Um, for example, that the IAD uh, requires to have uh, maintenance uh, roads on both sides of the canal. Uh, additionally, the IAD is not um, it's not common practice to have fences or any type of barrier to because prevent maintenance. So, um, additionally, the way that uh, the design is proposed right now needs to be redesigned. And remember that this is a four-lane uh, road at 45 uh, miles per hour speed, where um, the configuration or the proposed or modified configuration will not allow the traffic to, to be in the current um, design. Uh, the lanes will not work because there won't be enough uh, width to make a dedicated uh, right and left turn lanes uh, at the intersection of 1st Street and 2nd Street. Maybe it's a little complicated, but we already analyzed that. And uh, so it, it won't work, so it will need to be redesigned and probably uh, removing one of the lanes, not uh, as uh, the current design. So it changes the whole configuration. The, the eastbound also will, will have to be um, offset to the south uh, in the proximity of the back of the existing uh, uh, residences in the future. So it will change the whole thing. It's not like uh, we can just shift it and, and it will solve the problem. And Mr. Silas, just for clarification for the public, you're talking about maybe the, the, the current proposed, um, what seems like a short term um, kind of an interim um, solution the, the, the interim before right. the ultimate undergrounding and the finishing of well uh, the, the what should be the final product right well the, the, it needs to be defined uh, if it's short uh, or if it's interim how long it will be interim or if it's not happening it will stay there forever and if it's short who will pay for the relocation later on when the canal is underground then underground it in, in the, 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 the street that is, uh, or the, the portion that the eastbound that is on the south okay. now, will be had to be relocated to the and current alignment. I, I want to make sure we do this because, um, and, and again, there are many elements to this project that have yet to be vetted and work, worked through. So I want to make very clear uh, what the goal of tonight is, is how we can proceed. So the goal is to take an action with uh, a set of some de defined conditions that we're in high agreement, obviously, as a council, hopefully, um, to proceed so we can further um, not only the discussion but get Mr. Coyne on the way. Now, having said that, things like standards, there's a lot of technical work, and traditionally the way these projects work is a lot of this work is done up front, presented to council by staff. Um, in, in, in this case, due to the nature of the project, including, and I, I say this to the public so they understand, because of the canal, that's one of the big barriers. If, if, if that doesn't happen, I think I've heard it from Mr. Coyne that it's really a deal breaker for any developer. Hence why this project's probably sat, not that there aren't others, but others are starting to move. So with that in mind, um, the 60 day, I, 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 I do, that's to hear back from the Imperial Irrigation District in some form that uh, is, is uh, an assurance to, to council. Um, that there's a mechanism to move forward um, and potentially a plan. I know a plan can't be uh, developed in that short a period of time, um, but would it be reasonable um, to consider something like this sooner than later? I think we had a resident come up talk about five, eight, ten years. That was likely going to be, un uh, I think, unacceptable to me or, or, or most of council. I think the public as well. I think there's a solution here that's going to be uh, potentially a lot quicker. The problem is we're talking about something that hasn't happened yet. So. Could we move forward with action, with conditions um, on, on what our, the council's <coughs> expectations would be? I think if the council adopts specific language pertaining to the best canal undergrounding mm -hmm. that uh, includes the reference to 60 days uh, from now, a commitment from IID, that you could then consider uh, a condition change as it relates to the release of building permits. That's one way to approach it. Okay. And so I would like to get, I mean, whether that's a yes or a no to move forward, that happened tonight. That way, Mr. Coyne, uh, he knows what he's faced with, and, and um, we can move forward as well. This has come before him and, and us multiple times. 
Um, I, I w I, I'm in agreement of, of whatever we need to do uh, to get the feedback from uh, um, Imperial Irrigation District that really um, secures um, our ability to move forward with this particular issue. And I think going from there, the only other issue, as I've already raised, is the security issue. So. Uh, so is that a reasonable, uh, I guess we could ask uh, Mr. Pacheco, is uh, the 60 days, is that a reasonable amount of time for us to get word, firm, a firm decision from IID? Yeah, I, I think that's real reasonable. I think the, the directors are really working hard to find any avenue to help out. So the 60 days will work perfectly. Uh, I think um, actually in 30 days would probably, but 60 is even better. Okay. Fantastic. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. If you don't mind, I was uh, lucky enough to get a 30-day extension, uh, effective April 1st, from the seller. Uh, so maybe we can at least put it at 30 days with an extension, another 30 days if IID doesn't come through. Because uh, if I go back and say 60 days, he's going to say your option expires in 30 days. Um, so that probably, hopefully, we'll get to where we need to be and get an answer from IID sooner. But I'm a little bit concerned. So, so I go 30 back days? 30 and then maybe, then I can hit them on another 30 day extension, but to go back and say, uh, you follow me? Kind Sir, of I, I, I respect that. The only thing I would say to that, I think it would be the interest of, of, of the current owner as well, that one way or another was 30 would, or 60 would, that this is concluded. So I think this is a pretty pivotal issue, but thank you, I'm noted. And then I don't know, um, a little bit of discussion on building permits and everything. Those building permits for those first 50 is what's gonna help the city fund that 25%. Uh, which is over half a million dollars. So to hold back and say no building permits or anything until the canal goes underground, then the funds potentially will not be there. So I think uh, your city manager just kind of made that comment. Um, so you just got to, you know, be careful on that one. Um, the, the money to fund the canal and Wildcat Road. We need some clarification yes, to what you're did. describing. I'm not sure if I understand. I don't think, I don't think he's making either. reference to this evening. I think it's the, the staff denial and the staff report, oh. not tonight's well, comments. What I was suggesting is bookending the potential approval in a manner that references the 60 days and potentially releases the 50 building permits, which is what you're requesting. Upon finding yes. out from ID. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. And then a limitation, I think, on the maybe a limitation on how long it takes to underground that canal Correct. once those That's 50 are given to you and then how fast IID works on that how fast Absolutely. whoever's responsible for undergrounding it works on that and I think I think we were talking it well discussion was 12 months 12 months I think during a 12 month period that work has to be completed at least within the underground of the canal the 50 homes can be built during that time period but that canal has to be underground during that understood time and if, you, if you check the minutes of the planning commission it was really arranged that that uh, we could not get cfos on the balance of the 45 finished lots until the canal and wildcat road was in mm -hmm. but it allowed us to go concurrently so we get to the finish line same time that way we're sharing dirt or whatever the case may be is when you're building wildcat road mm -hmm. or doing undergrounding so mm -hmm. thanks um, if I may assist with yep. the, the undergrounding topic just to see if we can get towards final yep. language. What I've heard council refer to uh, is a 60-day, a request by Mr. Coyne for a 30-day that might be helpful to moving things, um, a 30, an initial 30 with a 30-day extension, is that correct? Yeah. So maybe it's structured in that fashion. And then uh, Mr. Couchman referred to a 12-month period for actual completion of the undergrounding following uh, the commitment from IID. The reason that could be a workable solution is in our discussions with IID, because that first leg that the city is uh, pursuing with the grant funded activity, the intent would be to complete the, we have to have the pipelining complete for that leg to be accomplished as a city project. So uh, our discussions with IID have centered around if there were other funding that was potentially identified that when the work was performed to underground the first leg for the city project, the entire undergrounding would take place. So the 12 month time horizon allows for that window because our grant funding is within 12 months of execution or loss of the million dollar award. Understood. Okay. Just a key yes. component. So and if it can happen sooner than that, it would happen sooner than that, but Fantastic. I think that's a viable I think that's a viable amount of time for all of that to occur. And Mr. Uh, Pacheco is nodding in agreement that our understandings are correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and he addressed you by name even. Look <laughs> well, I'm over at his meeting all the time. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm a regular. <laughs> Maybe move, move down with some with of the, the other. With the. Um, for other things. The, the deed. 
I'll never leave it read to it. the rest of council. They have any. Yeah, any comments? Uh, and again, we, I think we're addressing the canal, but um, security issue, any additional yeah. questions? I, I think that there's some other things we have to talk about. But I mean, I think overall, and, and when I look at the discussion, I appreciate everybody being here to give their input and everything. I do think the reality is somewhere in between some of the discussion that we've had or some of the input that we've received. Mr. Coyne is here as a developer. He's here to make a profit. We're here as the city council to try to see that a development goes through but we also have to protect the taxpayer's dollars, as you're all well aware. And so we have to kind of, many times it's a negotiation process with all developers, and it doesn't matter who the developer is, they come through with an idea of what they might want or what they would like to have, and then we as a city have to decide what can we do and how can we help them, and then they, then they proceed with a successful uh, project. All developers, all developments pretty much occur in that way. I, my, my concern is the same, I think, as Mr. Hanby's, is, is that we have residential, but we don't have commercial. And, and the fact of the matter remains is that residential is, requires a lot of uh, investment from the city, but it doesn't necessarily return that investment in a real rapid fashion, uh, such as a sales tax or something on that nature. It's a property tax. Some of the people that move into the residences will do that, but not if, not if our residence that doesn't increase at a level uh, to bring in that kind of revenue. And usually that does not happen in a very rapid pace. Neither do developments. Nothing really happens in a very rapid pace when you're dealing with these kinds of issues. So what we try to do is do the best we can to make the best deal that we can so that development does occur, so that we're not viewed as unfriendly to development, but so that we're not wasting the taxpayers' money or giving away the taxpayers' money in a way that is not beneficial for our community. And so that's kind of the way we kind of look at these things. And I, I think when I, when I get the input and the hearing and everything, the reality rests somewhere in a balance. And we have to try to strike that balance. And hopefully we can do that in most cases. Sometimes we don't. And sometimes projects fail. Uh, and you know, I don't know that we're always responsible for that. I don't think that we are for housing bubbles that collapse and things that occur. But I think we try to do the best we can and make the decisions at the time that, that we do them. I think we're trying to be fair to Mr. Coyne while still balancing the needs of the city and the amount of money that we, that we provide in services, not necessarily in cash. It's not always just $2 million and he's just getting $2 million. A lot of times it's that we offset things with grants, we offset items that the city can do or that we can get other, other entities to do, and that's kind of how that works. So I just want everybody to kind of understand that, that it, it's not all just this way or that way, it usually it strikes a balance and it's a negotiated process, just, just so you know. And, and uh, you know, please forgive me, I, I don't agree entirely with the word choice because I don't like to use the word deal when we're in the process. It's more of a, we have to make a decision, right? And that, that's considering, you know, uh, you know the, the public's input, considering the developer's uh, input and their priorities and, and everybody's concerns. I, I don't always agree with Mr. Hamby. Where, where is Mr. Hamby at? I don't always agree with him, but I certainly think that you brought up some valid points. I, I do agree with many of the things that you said here tonight. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things. I mean, we've gone over this issue multiple times. I would like to see it move forward. I know that there's concerns with the, uh, public concerns, and I, there are my own concerns as well. I think if we can address that, I would like to move forward um, and, and find some way to approve this project um, to see if uh, this can continue to develop our community. Um, you know, I was on council and I was first elected in 2007. I've been here on council since then. And I can tell you, during that time, I've been in real estate for since 2004, early 2004. And uh, I remember being elected at the time and it was just one of the worst uh, housing um, times in, in recent history it was terrible and we're, we're far from that now but we're still not at any sort of peak anytime right and so um, you know I, I admire the fact that mr. coin is investing locally he may be from from out of town but he's still local to the area and so um, you know it's it's uh, it takes money to develop things I mean and, and I don't want to see us beat ourselves up over over dollars that are spent here and employment that's occurring here and all the other things that are going to take place. So, um, you know, I, again, I, I share the concern of the undergrounding, the security instrument that's going to be used to, to protect everybody, but uh, I would like to see things move forward. So those are my Mr. final Mayor, comments. Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, I was elected in 2009. 
We've seen a lot of developers and a lot of developments. We've approved a lot of developers and a lot of developments here in Brawley. And we've seen an intense amount of growth. And we've also seen businesses that come and go. Uh, but I do think, yes, we want to work with everybody. I don't know if deal's the right word, but we do have to negotiate and we do have to talk about requirements. And we do have some that we can't, we can't back off on. And then we have some that we can, we can maybe be able to give somebody some relief in order to do something that they may be real interested in. And so I think I've been here on the council a long time. We, we, we've dealt with this issue many, many times, and it's just a part of the process that we go through uh, trying, to, trying to achieve a growth in the city of Brawley over a course of a long period of time. And with okay. that, I, I mean, I, I'll I, give it back over to the mayor. I want to move forward. So thank you uh, for the comments. Here, here furthermore. I, ju yeah. I just a couple of uh, comments, because it'll never get to this side, I don't think. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, to share that as, as when I was elected to the city council, a lot of the concerns out there are that there was no growth in Brawley. And so we're talking about both housing developments and we're talking about uh, commercial development and economic growth all, all around. And so when I see someone like Marty come forward and is interested in helping uh, our city grow, it right away opened my eyes to some uh, opportunity to answer uh, the requests from the community. I'm here for the community. The community wants to see growth. And even though it's not commercial, um, and maybe there's talk about not enough uh, income coming in from the property taxes and so forth. The people themselves living in the community are going to spend money in the community. And it's going to create um, more um, involvement in the city and the community. And um, I mean, our police department, of course, it is very important. But I think with the community being in the, in the city, and spending money in the city, that in itself will bring commercial development. Um, we've gotten, I think the Brawley has gotten a reputation that we're, we're not pro-growth, that everybody that comes to Brawley is turned away. So I think this is a great opportunity for us. Uh, there's always a give and take, but I, I personally, I think that our council um, agrees that we are looking uh, to give an opportunity to this developer to Mr. Coyne to work with him and hopefully IID is able to help us with this uh, big project and, and make this a successful um, project for the city of Brawley. And then I just wanted to, I know there's some conditions that we talked about. Could I, that we could I before you do that, that's okay, what I want to sure. touch on. I'm okay. going to frame this up. So I'm going to ask staff because uh, they're here. So let, let's move. We addressed the canal issue. Um, there are several others. Um, in the staff recommendation, we talked about the elimination of conditions per uh, the developer, condition number 17, 23, 24, and 25, and I think those yes. have been addressed. Mm -hmm. um, there are additional conditions um, around the topics of building permits, security for the improvements, which I've brought up and all of us have, the best canal, which, um, which we have all um, certainly chimed in on. Um, and we've talked about some solutions there. South um, Western Avenue um, is another issue, Legion Street, and then South Imperial Avenue. So there have been recommendations on all of those, all of the above, with the exception of what we talked about on Best Canal for denial of moving for under those conditions. What I want to know is, because um, we did task and had numerous uh, um, opportunities to discuss and even do our own research on what we can do, what can we do, are there some uh, potential um, proposed changes we can make here this evening um, that uh, can really get this deal to move forward and get it um, potentially uh, done. And I, I don't know if referring to who. Would you like uh, us to go in the same order as referenced by yes. condition just numbers? Just or building permits, you? sure. Okay. I'll, so I'll, I'll call it out, building permits. And under the, uh, the current request, immediately release building permits on the next 96 lots, unit right. number one, with so no further offsite improvement. Should, should council um, wish to consider the planning commission recommendation, uh, the developer's perspective this evening, as well as comments from the audience? Uh, we do have a proposed structure to uh, conditions, but they're not they're in the staff report. They're uh, represented in terms of topics. Mm -hmm. uh, in the conditions of approval, they're referenced by numbers. Mm -hmm. So, if I might suggest that we use the numbered numbers. references, that okay. could help to to move the conversation uh, along. 
So I, I think council has provided some direction as it relates to uh, the best canal undergrounding. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked, uh, we've heard this evening a reference to a, a 30 to 60 day window and a 12 month time horizon for completion. There's also been specific reference to uh, what types of security may be acceptable. Uh, and that is uh, different from staff recommendation, but consistent with planning commission recommendation. Um, I would be happy to help you work on crafting some language for the security related item, which we would recommend come under uh, three condition number three, a subset we call out as security. Uh, Brawley Investment Ventures shall post security for all on-site and off-site improvements in the form of a traditional bond, letter of credit, or deed in lieu of uh, uh, option. Yeah. Is that what where yes. council wants to go? And, when, what is the go and I, I think that deed in lieu <laughs> and what we talked about was that it had to be of a value that yes. would meet okay. the off-site or the, or the requirements that would meet the amount of money that we're talking about, not something that's either a blank piece of property or whatever that we cannot receive adequate funding out of if, if in the event of anything occurring, not that anything would occur. However, I think we have to have that additional security. Mr. Coyne, if you could allow us to work through this, and then when we come to a final, then there'll be opportunity uh, to discuss, if you, if you could. So we can, we, we can get this done. Okay. And move forward and then and bring it back because I, I at this moment this is the public process I have no clue what we as a council where we're at on these topics um, on page 26 there is reference to uh, item 3 yeah it, uh, states accept the unit 2 portion of the property in lieu of bonds based on a value established by a licensed real estate appraiser if you take that that statement and combine it with uh, Brawley Investment Ventures shall post security for all on-site and off-site improvements in the form of a traditional bond, letter of credit, or property in lieu of bronze based on a value established by a licensed real estate appraiser. I think you cover uh, at least the points that have been made to date. Okay. Council? Comments on that? Who, it, just to, as a devil's advocate, who who establishes the appraiser and who hires the appraiser and who actually, and how do we accept that appraisal? As stated currently, it simply requires a uh, real estate appraiser with uh, who's licensed in residential properties. If the council wishes for it to be as approved by the city uh, or as selected by the developer, it's up to you. Uh, how you wish to structure that if you want to be more specific. Right. Is council com are, are you I'm not comfortable with the uh, licensed real estate appraiser. Okay. Yeah. I can go along with that as long as we're all comfortable with that. Okay. We don't know what the value is going to be before the appraiser goes in. As uh, long as it meets our demands and that, that it meets the requirements that we have yeah. uh, for a value. So if the value were short, it would be <coughs> offset or augmented by a letter of credit, a bond, cash on deposit. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Right. Or correct. perform the improvement. Absolutely. Council Member Hamby, I'm just going to go down the list to make sure. I, we I just know in certain, at least commercial and residential situations where an appraisal is needed, the, the two parties in question, developer, the city in this case, would each get an appraiser. Those, those two appraisers would come to an agreement together. Happy to take council's direction on it. Um, what one other way to do it is if the if we have uh, it could be subject to uh, the city's approval of the document. And if we want to contest that the values that are represented, let's say it's a real estate appraiser that calls out a, a, a unfinished lot as you know worth eighty five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And it, it just doesn't pass the sniff test for one reason or another. It could be reviewed by a, a, a second appraiser. But otherwise, we'd be incurring a cost. Mm -hmm. Both ends an would be incurring cost. an additional okay. cost. Okay. Sounds like we have a yeah. agreement there. I don't think we need a second appraiser. Okay. I don't have any objections. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Moving forward. All right. We're okay. So, uh, that gets us through the security question, unless the topic of personal guarantee is anything of interest to the council. 
because we're talking about deed in lieu of bond. Now we have no bond. So at the end of the day, it's like I made the, the, the comment. We're now we potentially, as security, have, have property that, that the city. What we would likely have is property and yeah. something else. Yeah. 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 But, okay. but going back yes. to the whole undergrounding, if that is approved, for example, by the IID, I think it reduces risk for the developer and, and um, you know, it, it's not as big of an issue if um, that project wasn't approved, so, because there's more money that would need to be required in order to make this development happen, so that's, you know, my own comment on that. So if the IID uh, <coughs> assisted with the undergrounding project, the cost of improvements would be reduced by definition. Uh, just as a matter of note, uh, when security is required, it's based on the engineer's opinion of probable cost and quality. <coughs> so what is actually part of the improvements? That's what's the driver for 110% to the value. So uh, our hope would be to follow uh, standard professional practice for obtaining that security mm -hmm. in the amount, but the reduced amount would obviously be realized by the developer if IID was able to assist. Seems reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the security topic. Uh, the canal undergrounding, you've gone through in some detail. There is some proposed language. If you'd like to have me read it into the record, I can. If not, we don't. In addition to what we've discussed? Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. So, um, and this has a certain amount of detail to it because of the sensitivity of undergrounding and wanting to see the safety issue addressed. And also, here the request from the developer for uh, some form of ability to move forward with building permits. So I'm gonna walk through what these uh, possibilities are and look for council concurrence. The City of Brawley shall provide Brawley Investment Ventures a period of 60 days from April 3rd, 2019 to receive IID's formal commitment of funds to support undergrounding of the Best Canal from South First Street to South, uh, I'm sorry, yes, South First Street to South Imperial Avenue. The developer shall deposit the remaining balance of the project cost for design and security of the Best uh, Canal undergrounding concurrent with security and city council approval of the subdivision improvement agreement. That's just normal practice. At the time the subdivision improvement agreement is approved, security is provided. And uh, we take up the topic of security in the prior item referenced. Uh, the developer shall pay and or provide security in the amount of 25% or 50% of the undergrounding cost of the best canal plus any actual cost difference with IID committed funds. And want to note for the record that uh, IID has uh, shared with city staff that there are certain eligible costs associated with undergrounding and some that are excluded. So we, what we want to be sure of is that that match portion will be carried by the developer, whether it's, tw if we have the good fortune of 75% funding by IID, the 25% um, local match would be carried by the developer. If it's 50%, then it's 50%. And then anything that's not eligible is not uh, is the city is not the city's responsibility. It's actually the developer's obligation to uh, offset the cost. Uh, IID shall commence with construction of the undergrounding of the Best Canal from South First to South Imperial Avenue within a period of 12 months, beginning April 3rd, tomorrow. If the Best Canal pipelining work does not commence, this condition modification shall not be valid. In no way does IID commit, IID's commitment of funds or the developer's deposit of a portion of the funds required relieve the developer of the financial responsibility to perform the construction of the best canal undergrounding. So if for some reason IID committed and then backed out, it doesn't become the city's responsibility. Okay. That, that, so canal, canal, canal topic. That's not. I'm not hearing far fetched. I, I want to make sure we're all on well, the I'm same. Well, I'm out of the link, and we're not on okay. the same page. Okay. And I can't okay. participate with you. What? What? So what part of if 
the funding were to drop out, I've already heard. So it sounds like it, it, the deal maker, is there, is there some agreement here where, again, if we're not successful with the IIG together, um, that that may be the end of the discussion. We, 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 you've clearly articulated that. We're yeah. So we're, we're under the assumption with the best of intentions that that moves forward. So I think we're on the same wavelength with that, correct? Well, in the funding within 12 months, we have to sell those pool building permits and build them and sell them before we can come up with the funding for Wildcat Road and the Best Canal. Mm -hmm. And that was proposed, you know, many times through staff is, is uh, you yeah. know, um, I, I do if I were if I may I yeah. think I can put you at ease a little bit if I had had Please. an opportunity to walk through it well even the first one I didn't get, get to participate on and it was starting to let us sway and, and it'd just be easier for me to go with you on each one and, and put okay. it to bed rather than revisit it again okay. I think we're all, uh, almost done and then we'll, we'll go so Literally this is under a subsection if would you like me to continue on with what I was or jump to the building permits topic just let her continue okay yeah. okay um if the city of Brawley does not receive IID communication in the aforementioned terms of the 60-day period, which begins April 3rd, or if IID's commitment for is for pipelining work that will commence beyond the 12-month time horizon, which begins April 3rd, the condition modifications shall expire. The developer shall be wholly uh, financially responsible for the construction of the best <coughs> undergrounding. This condition modification is only ap applicable to Brawley Investment Ventures and shall expire 60 days after April 3rd and 12 months from the same date if requirements are not met. Uh, the condition modification is non-transferable in the event that the undeveloped portion of the subdivision changes ownership. And uh, with either IID's formal commitment to underground the best canal or, or bonding or security actually fully in place, the developer shall be permitted to pull up to 50 building permits in unit one. So you actually get your 50 building permits provided in 60 days we get an answer from IID. And if we don't? And if you don't, Indeed. the best canal undergrounding is your responsibility. Deal breaker. It's $3 million. So, so I can't close escrow. Uh, even on the property with that. If you have forward. your answer in 30 days, do you have the ability to uh, make a decision on your purchase? Not with an open-ended, uh, I assume, the responsibility of a $3 million canal. I, I have a point of order question. I was under the impression that the, the public hearing session was closed. It is. It, it is. is. It is. He's the applicant. He can speak to his topic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are members of the public allowed yeah. to address those things, or is that only for the applicant to, I, to speak when? We had the public process of, please sit. Please stay, and uh, if, if that's something we can work in, but please allow us to work through this process. We are trying in earnest, all right, to collect all the information. So I encourage you to stay. There's an opportunity to do so, certainly, but let us work through. We're, we're very incomplete here, all right? Mm -hmm. So chiming in in the middle is not going to help. I just want to keep it moving. So Which is exactly okay. the, the All right, the we're trying to get information. Understood. All right. So uh, the structure that is proposed for an IID answer uh, is aims to be consistent with the escrow period that you're in, Mr. Coyne, and your decision that you need to make about moving forward. What uh, is trying to be conveyed is that undergrounding is a goal of the city for development to occur in that area. Um, there's a, a risk to public safety that is uh, not something that the, the city uh, would accept beyond the 50 okay, building so basically the project goes dead and it stays the way it is after 30 days if we can't get any IID support or maybe that 30 day extension I and just want to be clear it in mr. Quinn I, I think we were all from the very beginning from the very first time this was proposed publicly and we've discussed this sure. that that was the kind of the make or break of this uh, no potential problem. project for everybody not just you, you you know, well, I don't know so that's but I think we have something in place um, that's addressing all aspects of this deal so I'm hoping we're very close to pass that with a solution e even with the idea i'm a little bit yeah. concerned like on the 12 months it, it would be a miracle i, I think uh, i thought uh, so mr quinn again d aiming to give you a little bit of peace of mind in our discussions with iid staff that have to do with the city funded mm -hmm. portion of the project for the first leg backside of walmart to first street Correct. we absolutely must complete our project on time or we lose our grant funding. The discussions to date with IID personnel are the time at which pipeline, pipelining would occur. Mm -hmm. IID doesn't want to go in twice, do our little leg, and then come back at a later date. Mm -hmm. The question that, that is outstanding is whether or not they can find the resources to accomplish the whole thing. The city will pay for its portion, and uh, you as developer will have the benefit 
of assistance at either the 50% or 75% level. But those are the proportions we've discussed with them. We don't know what the final. And that would happen would within that time frame. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I know that there's a few loose ends that need to be mm -hmm. tightened up there, but I think we're getting to the finish line. So. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'm just having a hard time following okay. you. I, I was looking at planning commission recommendations. Are you coming mm -hmm. off of something else? Just trying to follow you. I'm Whatever. trying to assist the staff city recommendation is denials. So mm -hmm. you know that's we're okay. trying to work through some of these denials and really um, um, hopefully get to where a lot we, of we can get this done. It's going to be up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Coyne, I think we're in. in like I said, in earnest, trying to work through these issues. And uh, if, if we can get there, and it's a deal breaker, that certainly would be your decision. Understood. And, yeah. and are we going to work through the planning commission uh, recommendation? as part of on the first page of your that, that is certainly part of our packet but we're operating right now off okay. of um, from that our staff recommendations okay. based on those findings okay um, building uh, we yeah. uh, so the building permit topic we have that one clear that 50 building permits released uh, following IID's answer understood okay and then, so council, you, I, I think council needs to, mm -hmm. to give a final decision on the 30 or 60 day, however that is structured. If it's more helpful to Mr. Coyne to have it be 30 well, days. The, you want that. the problem is if he needs another 30, then you're back at sure. a public yeah. hearing and a condition modification. So maybe there's a way to structure the language. Up to? up to a max of something up like that. Up to 60 days. Okay. Extensions that we need. All right. I guess we can word it up to 60 days. Okay. While you're on that 50 building permits, as it was kind of discussed a little bit, uh, during planning commission was being able to pull the other 45 while we're putting in wildcat in the canal mm. uh, to be so we can rob dirt back and forth or whatever is necessary but no CFOs but just be able to pull permits so yeah. um, our recommendation seat. at this point is only the 50 building permits uh, council wants to well, consider let me correction was it CFOs or building permits it's mm. building permits staff recommendation is building permits the minutes up from the planning commission are in the backup as to what their recommendation is I am uh, following council's direction to help them find some other middle ground. Uh, the next item is referred to as condition 18, uh, Southwestern Avenue. So uh, Southwestern Avenue, if you look at the backup, uh, the, planning, the planning commission recommendation is to push it to the last uh, lots 260 through 272 of unit two. Uh, Staff's recommendation in the backup of the Planning Commission was to deny. At Council's direction, I have some proposed language that's somewhere in between. Uh, it is proposed that construction of the eastern half of Western Avenue adjacent to Unit 1 shall commence prior to issuance of the 86th building permit in said unit. Construction of the eastern half adjacent to Unit 2 shall commence prior to the issuance of the 100th building permit in Unit 2. <coughs> Do I have any of that in writing? You have what I am expressing to you on the record here. And we'd be happy to provide it to you in writing after if the council wishes to move forward with, with uh, these options. Okay, the next is Legion Street, and this is the southern roadway, east goes east to west, a portion of which, which is weatherproof and a portion of which is to city standard. Uh, if you look in the backup for Legion, um, similar to Southwestern Avenue, the Planning Commission recommends pushing it to units 252 through 259. Staff recommendation to Planning Commission was to deny. At Council's direction, staff uh, is proposing change language uh, that uh, aims to find the middle ground. The north half of Legion Street shall be constructed to the standards of a collector from Southwestern Avenue to Branding Iron Avenue prior to the issuance of the 51st building permit in Unit 2. From Band Branding Iron Avenue to the Park Retention Basin, the developer shall improve Legion Street to an all-weather road standard approved by the city engineer. Okay. And then on to Pano slash Wildcat. The prior condition was about uh, number 18 was about the undergrounding this is about the roadway related improvement uh, and if you uh, look at how the the Planning Commission structured that condition it basically takes the notion of a, um, letting IID undergrounding occur at some future unknown date 
and instead installing a portion of a roadway and having that roadway wherever it is planted be the location that it is for the rest of time so the undergrounding would occur at some point in the future but the roadway would stay as is mm. uh, it what uh, is accomplished with undergrounding of the Bri Bryant Canal is the ability to actually build the roadway the way it was uh, defined in the improvement plans. So uh, the south half of Pan this is proposed language, the south half of Pano Drive or Wildcat Drive shall be constructed to the standards of a minor arterial, including medians from Southwestern Avenue to South Imperial Avenue. Construction of Wildcat Street improvements from first to South Imperial. This is the segment after the city portion. That's rear of wa uh, Walmart to First Street. So first to South Imperial shall commence prior to the developer obtaining the 51st building permit. This does not mean that it shall be complete. It means that it shall commence. So it's moving forward with construction for that 51st building permit in Unit 1 to be pulled. Uh, the city shall waive the streets portion of development impact fees and recognize construction of Wildcat Drive in lieu of payment along the subdivision boundary. So that's, that gets you to this topic of uh, the relief package and makes reference to how it specifically, what's the nexus with Wildcat. So that's condition 20. Condition 21, uh, Dogwood Road slash South Imperial Avenue. Um, are, are you okay with me proceeding? Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. So uh, for Dogwood Road, South Imperial Avenue, you can um, take a look at the uh, the Planning Commission recommendation, which is uh, basically uh, timing that portion of the roadway, which is just this little section um, that abuts uh, the the subdivision on uh, the west side. So, um, in, in if Gordon, if you can point to that area as well, we should probably be visually indicating to folks what we're talking about. Um, so, what was proposed is that it, w it uh, not be completed until the last six lots in Unit 1. Instead, uh, the staff this evening proposes the west half of South Imperial Avenue shall be constructed to the standards of a collector from Wildcat Drive to the Union Pacific Railroad right-of-way prior to the issuance of the 73rd building permit in Unit 1. And that, uh, Mayor Wharton, is all of uh, the proposed language changes. And just want to note that reference to the $2,118,000 uh, relief package is also recommended by staff uh, in any action to be taken by the council. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that. Um, so again, council questions again with staff here on the nature of what was uh, presented as um, some alternatives um, versus the denials. I think that's pretty important. So I appreciate that. Um, and then certainly there'll be an opportunity again, uh, Mr. Coyne, if, uh, for comments. But going down the list, uh, Council Member Hamby, do you have any questions on those presented or discussed? I think the questions I had were, were answered. I just want to clarify <coughs> uh, <coughs> the construction of or, or the the undergrounding of best canal um, with the help of IID you're saying would begin within the 12 month period not be completed within the 12 month period correct and I, I'm sorry I misspoke with Bryant there's a Bryant drain and a best canal right, yeah. so my apologies best canal yes and how did, that does not affect the, the the grant funding that we currently have for our the section that we're um, our work with IID is well underway for the city led project um, we do not anticipate uh, any delays with our ability to accomplish uh, the pipelining in coordination with IID the only remainder question is whether or not uh, we can find a way to accomplish the, it in its entirety. The, the hope is that dovetails together yeah. and it's right. completed. Right. Together. right. So get ours done anyway. And uh, Mr. Coyne made reference to uh, the 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 twenty five percent was going to come from permit fees, but I I, I don't know if I misheard that or uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Coyne's reference. Yes. Revenue from sales. By yeah. releasing 50 building permits, right. he could make make so them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you're saying the recommendation would be C of O's for no. those 50, so that he can sell those to fund the 25 percent. 
Well, we actually haven't taken on the topic of COOs. We're saying that 50 building permits will be released. If council wishes to give greater definition to that topic, we certainly can take that feedback. It's not in the current language. Otherwise, he would have to come up with 25% for the undergrounding just out of revenue that he has. To pull the 51st building permit. The topic of COO isn't taken up at all. Okay. So gotcha. what he would do is pull a building permit and when that unit is done, he gets issued a certificate of occupancy. We're not we're not proposing to hold the COO okay. Okay. hostage. That was what I needed to hear. Okay, yeah, but that's, it's just that clarifies that. Then yeah. what happens is he uses yeah. that funding to pay the right. 25%. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand if we were holding on to those yeah. COOs until a certain point. Okay. Couchman, I don't really have any questions. I think you know it's going to have to go back to I think to Mr. Coyne to decide you know whether he can accept these conditions. I think I think we're, we're compromising. We're not we're not approving necessarily the planning commission, and we're not approving staff necessarily. What we're doing is we're looking at at some compromises here. I think in the overall, I think I think the biggest issue for me was the canal undergrounding and the security, mm -hmm. and the rest of this. You know, we can, we can talk, and there may be other issues that come up later on with some of this stuff as we move along through this process, but I'm hoping that we can reach some form of agreement for the development to go through. And that's... Councilman I just uh, want to see the project move forward, but I, I certainly would uh, go along with the uh, staff, um, the modifications presented. I, I realize it's not necessarily what was, uh, uh, you know, presented by the Planning Commission, but I hope that there's some... Um, some some ground for Mr. Coyne to uh, be able to to work through and and uh, I think it all really is going to be dependent on how the IID approaches resolved. So really I, I hope if we could just have that answer, that, that, that would yeah. Yeah. make a lot of this our, go away. Our goal was to try to have that answer sooner than tonight's meeting, so we can move forward with the. But. I I think I'm clear on on uh, once Rosanna uh, explained all the modifications again. I don't know if Mr. Coyne has any disagreement with any part of the modifications and if he does I guess we're willing to to hear those out right now um, I, right I was gonna okay I would I'm make sorry <laughs> maybe <laughs> not <laughs> sure I, I, I do want to offer that opportunity but I, I do want to get this close because we do have a, a additional business I know a lot of work has gone into this but I, I would certainly offer you. well I, I appreciate your time mm -hmm. and I know you have some other agendas um, what staff is denying and what we need to accomplish and the amount of money up front that's required, and we're talking building permits, there's a huge difference between building permits and CFOs, and she's well, we haven't talked about it yet. Um, there's not enough clarity. If I asked any of you to repeat everything she read that I haven't seen and, and written right now, could you repeat it right now? No, no. And, and, and actually, I neither. yeah, and Mr. So, Quinn, so there's a lot of things we can't no, um, actually but, <laughs> repeat. But, but that's going. I'm afraid to have you vote on something that you really don't have clarity on or myself. Um, so I would either ask you to continue it if, if you ask me to accept the way she proposed to vote without seeing it in writing, because mm -hmm. none of us can remember everything on every condition and every denial, uh, would probably, uh, and, and if, if, if you hung it on me to make a decision tonight, I'd probably have to reject staff's proposal. Why don't we do I, this? I, we spent three yeah. and a half hours with Planning Commission yep. in understand. detail yep. to make sure it'll work for the city and work for us. And I came in looking at that because that was the first page. I've been looking at denials for about six months, mm -hmm. and this is what we came up with that would work. And it really is splitting hairs on a lot of this stuff, guys. Whether it's 10 lots to the end or six lots to the end, it shouldn't make a darn bit of difference. You're getting your canal underground, you get Wildcat Road in. So if, if, if the road's to nowhere, Western and Legion doesn't happen for a while, who gives a damn? I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to get you what you want. And we are not going to disappear. We're not going to spend all those millions of dollars doing improvements. The first 50 units, every dime is going to go into what you guys want. Mm -hmm. And you still want to split hairs on the other stuff. And, and it's just, I don't know if it will work for anybody. So um, I think a couple of things from, you said, from what you said I think will help out. If we're in agreement on um, we're, we're close with the district and we've set a 60-day or up to a 60-day time frame, I don't think there's anything to lose to do the due diligence of what, what's been presented, move to the next meeting, give you an opportunity to stay engaged with staff, come to whatever's acceptable ultimately to you. But if it's the same conditions we just discussed, um, I think we'll be able to move forward. If it changes, once again, we will have to do the um, same process in council, which will be the next council meeting. We can certainly do. But is, would that be your wish or I was going to attempt to 
aggregate this information and then move it. forward with a um, in the spirit of time uh, maybe continue it but but bottom line is is if nothing is is where we left off at with the Planning Commission after three and a half hours yeah. it's almost like we're starting all over again because mm -hmm. everything was based on staff denial and what staff is now recommending tonight mm -hmm. rather than anything that was recommended in all the hours that was invested by your your appointed planning commissioners and which we appreciate which got we, us to hear yeah well but we're going backwards yeah. and what your residents that live in the area had spoken mm -hmm. underground and canals and wildcat road i mean we're talking about doing all those things so what i'm saying you're splitting hairs and potentially going to lose this great opportunity for the city and i don't get it but maybe that's why maybe i shouldn't be doing business in the city of brawley mm -hmm. this is a great deal for the city and, and to take the time to split hairs over a couple of billing permits or when they're issued is just unbelievable. And um, I ask that you postpone it, give the time to the police department or anybody else that's here mm -hmm. uh, to the next hearing. But, but um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're coming to your community investing millions of dollars and, 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 and it's hard to be puppetized to, it, it can't go the way it's proposed. We have a lot of experience yeah. in this. Mr. Coyne, if I could add just a comment, if we were to move forward with an approval, you know, considering the, the modifications, that does give you time. It's an approved project at that point. It's approved by the city council. And that gives you time to see if the, 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 uh, the financing is in place with the IID. So it also puts you in a better position than you were when it, with it not being approved. Because if we go into the next meeting, and I'm not saying it's gonna be approved here tonight, but if we call for a vote and that occurs, that's an approval. Understood, but once it's approved and the, and the modifications are set the way staff's recommending and it doesn't fit our needs and requirements, then we're right back to square one. And, and then it's just going to sit around and not happen. And, and, and so I feel we're that close, and we don't have to do it tonight, that you give me the opportunity in public hearing to come back and have you take a second look at these, and maybe I'll propose some more stuff to you. But, but I don't think it you know, could go forward. I, I, yeah. Understood, but there's also the flip side to that, and it could be denied in the future. There could be opposition. There could, in my own opinion, and this is just my own, this isn't council's, but I if I could reach an approval on something sooner than later, I would do that. I mean, that's just me. Understood. Right? Mm -hmm. So. I, 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 I'm here to go forward with the project and invest in the city of Brawley with planning commission recommendations one through eight. And if there's any one of you that can answer why that cannot go through that way, I, I would love to hear it because it's my expertise, my engineers, my project managers, lenders, uh, you know, you got input from the residents, everybody to get us where we got. And I'm hearing something that you've never seen before from staff tonight. Well, we, we have. We, you know, you noticed it on the agenda. We did have a closed session discussion prior to the public hearing. So, but I have, do you have, I don't have it right so, on my So we did discuss um, some items there. And, and, you know, <coughs> having said that, we knew, uh, you know, your proposal, we knew what the Planning Commission had, had requested, and what our goal here on Council, and I think I can speak for everybody, is to try to find common ground to make this project move forward. I understand that it's not entirely what you're desiring, but in my own opinion, and this is just mine, if we can get to the point to where we can get a project approved to give you, number one, the <coughs> approval, and some time to, to work through the issues with the IID, I think it's, it's, it's better than continuing. That's, again, it's just me. Well, but and I, I respect the IID situation, but based on what I've heard tonight, we have more than, uh, of an issues than the IID. And, and so to have you guys go through the exercise creating new conditions on ones that I haven't seen yet in detail, I think would be counterproductive. And I'd rather take a chance at continuing it and see if we can work out if, if staff. The reason we went to Planning Commission and the reason we're here today, because we, re we reached our limits with staff a long time ago, like six months ago. And the only reason we went to Planning Commission with our plan and we hashed it out and we figured it out is because we reached our limits with staff and we're before you today after investing that time, public hearing, with this with the planning commission is to have you hopefully seek it and finish it off not rehash staff denials that occurred six months ago M and, and mr coin in fairness remember this this agenda was published um typically it, it not just for for the public but uh it's in our hands on friday we have x number of days obviously to to 
um, dig in, consume, ask questions, engage staff ourselves as in individual council members. So um, you can trust that uh, each and every one of us, however we do it, you know, in our own time, um, do that. But this is all stuff that happens in a relatively short period of time. So maybe taking your rec recommendation, I feel we're close. You said splitting hairs. I appreciate that. I'm glad you said that, that it's not a, some, a, a deep divide. I think you would, you know, have probably you know, throwing in the towel. I appreciate the um, going through the process. If we're that close, how about the opportunity to take what was proposed, make sure that uh, you, you have an uh, uh, opportunity to vet it, do your due diligence. I, I think we have, we have uh, basically a package that, that's been uh, shared. And uh, if there's a tweak or an adjustment to kind of close that, that splitting a hair, you know, gap, um, once stop, again, that's something. Can we stop talking about hair, please? Do. I don't. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> council it's a that. split. Can we so, just continue? Mr. Coyne, if that's good, we'll continue that. And, uh, we'll Either continue or make up. a vote subject to bringing it back and, and look at, re looking at the conditions. I, I don't know, but. but, but well, Mr. Mayor, you, yeah. you, you have the. Uh, I'm sorry. You definitely have the option to, t to entertain a motion to table the decision. Yeah. Or. You can direct staff to, to re-notice another public hearing for no, next time, but you've had a that. public hearing, so you don't, yeah. you're not, I don't think you're, you're absolutely required to have another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can just table the decision. Um, That's the direction I think we're going based on all, all of the input and certainly the input and some of the discussion we had tonight as far as the changes. So in light of that, um, I'll entertain a motion to table uh, this item uh, to the next meeting. Is so moved. Is that a motion? We just have a second. A, just some commentary. Yeah. Is there anyone else from the public that has a comment here? I think if we can sure. invite that, please. Do that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hamby, Mr. Hamby, if we could have you at the other mics because the recording device is there. Yes. Sorry, it's me again. Um, I just wanted to, to state, I just want to commend you guys for having a very fair process. I don't appreciate city staff being thrown under the bus on this. I think the process has been fair. This is how democracy works. All of you have been elected to work on behalf of the people of the city of Raleigh. I feel as a resident, you're doing a very good job. It's your responsibility to look out at this for the long-term interests of the city. I think that's being addressed. Your job is not to make any particular business model work for anyone. I think you're doing a very good job, if you can believe that. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Eric uh, Grace, I think there's a misunderstanding what the role of the Planning Commission is. I think the Planning Commission uh, <clears throat> makes its decision as your appointed uh, representatives, but the ultimate decision is with City Council. Um, they work with staff as well, and they get their decisions made, and then they, uh, <clears throat> City Council has a lot more responsibilities than an appointed uh, Planning Commission member, because they gotta get reelected, right? So think about that. There's a, talk about splitting hairs, I think, yeah, that's what I call splitting hairs. Um, <laughs> I think, sorry about, sorry George. But I think it's pretty clear that even if you go into continuance and you come to come next week, they're not gonna go revert to the eight that you want, Mr. Coyne. This is the, about the best you're gonna get, I think, if you think politically. If you can't work with this, I think it's a deal breaker, but I hope not, because I think they, 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 they compromised over denial and made modifications, pay as we go, as you call, as we call it, right? When you start something, the street has to be started, and you didn't say completed, it started. I mean, it's called pay as you go. I think that's more than fair. If not, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure you've been very successful in business. Maybe that's why uh, you feel you have the best model, the best engineers. Well, they have to make the business issue for the public. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Reyes. And I want to thank everyone again on this topic. So we have a motion. We have a second. I do want to make sure that we complete the vote. Thank you for the input. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. Will the issue, uh, the topic is tabled to the next meeting. I, I would just say that yeah. I, would, I was hoping to have a decision here today. So was I. That's, no, that's so been recorded, I think. Uh, really yep, and I, I'm sure as well as Mr. Coyne. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for all the input. Thank you for all the um, support, all sides, <laughs> community for coming out on this topic. Um, what I'll do is maybe. If, if I may know, we do cold. have a special meeting scheduled, so I just want to get uh, confirmed that the continued date is to the next regularly scheduled meeting Correct. not the special meeting where we have our general fund workshop oh no Je that ne never mind never it's april 16th yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the next april 16th april 16th april 16th, 16th. April 16th. Yeah. Uh, 6 p.m 16th yeah one six yes two weeks yeah. from today <laughs> that was, yeah. 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 
No one wants to hang out for strategy? I don't think he wanted that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. My, my um, maybe as predicted, um, it was going to be a heavy, heavy lift tonight. So for the strategy session, um, I'm, I'm sure individually, if you had some conversation with uh, Rosanna, um, I certainly did. Um, going into this and we're, we're going to have kind of we're going to try to narrow the the aperture if you will so we can kind of focus on just a couple of topics but it's obviously open to whatever discussion we want to have that kind of sets the stage for um, the budget planning process but my suggestion is maybe in light of this evening um, we can make this progressive there's no rules here where we cannot continue parts of this discussion or things that maybe we don't discuss um, throughout the whole budget process so I leave it open to that we don't have to do everything this evening um, but maybe uh, Rosanna just for that part of you can share with um, we, we, we thought it would be a great idea because it's come up already and we certainly already um, started into this with the completion of eighth you know the old 111 project of relinquishment dollars and then i think there's some other funds and some project capital improvement projects and and whatnot that we do have funding in place i think that's important so maybe that being the frame up rosanna if you could fantastic you know, so i have a quick. very short presentation the intent was to kind of talk about a few areas that uh we hope uh to receive some direction from you on and um, also uh, take a moment to talk through what we see as two areas that we've got existing funds to maybe think creatively about um, and uh, perhaps open up that discussion as well. So we want to begin tonight with a reminder of our mission statement, and this really guides everything we do as an agency. Our goal is to effectively provide the highest quality of municipal services in a manner that values local assets, builds public trust, and advances overall community prosperity. So what is the reason for today's conversation? I, I do want to thank all of you for being willing and flexible to accommodate uh, the continued public hearing today. Really, our hope had been for this discussion to be the centerpiece of tonight mm -hmm. uh, but we recognize that the timing associated with uh, mr coin's request really um, necessitated it being placed in front of this item so um, i'll try my best to be brief and and seek the type of uh, early guidance and input that can inform our future public meetings as we prepare content for your consideration uh, later uh, this spring so uh, my hope is that we have um, some clear direction provided and probably the biggest piece is just you know we we've gone to great lengths in recent years to do everything we can we've been in a fight to maintain service levels without increased costs and uh, while that strategy I think we've been fairly successful at maintaining the highest possible level of service <coughs> with the number of staff that we have in place uh, as we've seen our uh, general fund reserve uh, diminished uh, by this commitment to ongoing service levels, um, one of the things that maybe we haven't totally confronted is the fact that uh, finite funds, uh, their application of finite funds is really a zero-sum game. So there are winners and losers along the way. And what we've tried our best to do is try to keep all elements of quality of life as high as we possibly can and and those strategies that were employed to do that were really a lot of uh, creative thinking uh, patches and um, uh, I would say pragmatic arrangements uh, trying to work with the people uh, and talents we have in place to continue to provide services but uh, that is going to be more and more difficult uh, in the go forward and I think 1920 is going to be the year that we really uh, have far fewer choices because of it being a zero-sum game in two areas that are particularly sensitive to uh, the city as revenue sources, which are the Water Enterprise Fund and uh, the General Fund. And I won't do too much of a deep dive, but I, I do uh, hope that you know our goal is to get council consensus so that we figure out where, where you coalesce as a group, where you have a tolerance for change, and where uh, you are willing uh, to do whatever necessary to maintain a service level in one place 
uh, but recognizing that it's at the cost of another because there's only so many dollars available. What we always try to do is be mindful of risk, so safety as a general uh, concept, whether it's safety in our public facilities and issues that are presented to the public and user groups, or uh, safety to, to personnel uh, uh, in the practices that are a part of our workplace. And, and the end goal is really maximizing the city's uh, resources to its fullest potential. So uh, just as a refresher, uh, in, in past years, the council has embraced four goals, and, and then it described a subset of, of topics as a given. Uh, and I, I think what we're beginning to see is, uh, while all of these are very important features, uh, the financial stability piece of the equation, as well as what is assumed as given, uh, aren't necessarily synchronized. And so in order to ensure that certain features stay in place in the future, we're going to need to confront some difficult decisions about what can't continue in its current form. So for today's discussion, my hope is to, to really emphasize the financial stability part of the, uh, the city's goals. And of course, we're always open to a revisit of these goals and whether or not they're still relevant to the city or whether or not uh, you wish to prioritize them in a different fashion or move on and evolve past uh, what some of these features maybe have been in the past. So uh, what is financial stability about? Um, it's, it's kind of a two-way street. It's balancing what we know are operational demands, the things that are coming in the door every day and expected as services from a water, sewer, uh, public safety point of view. I think each of you have been uh, direct observers um, and recipients of feedback for some of the strategies we've employed to address operational demands in other parts of our city services, specifically uh, parks and recreation. Uh, and, and what we have uh, repeatedly committed and recommitted to is trying our best to keep our facilities financially accessible and in use as much as possible. And uh, sometimes the balance of those resources and operational demands are, uh, it's difficult to keep because uh, the, the cost of maintenance and staffing uh, hasn't become less, it's become more, and the number of permanent staff associated with those areas has also become less. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a future slide. So from a financial stability point of view, I think we, we have some major uh, topics that we're confronting. <coughs> uh, as you know, uh, we're now, our, our, our local elections are synchronized with uh, even your uh, local uh, off elected office uh, voting opportunities. So as a result of that, although our utility user tax is slated to expire in 2021, uh, we are confronting uh, in 2020, next, next year, the topic of extension. And so the question as to how we're going to handle that extension, if the city is going to move forward with a renewal um, or, uh, or not, is, is there for the council's consideration. Uh, there's also uh, been a topic of late uh, in budget discussions that have to do with the transient occupancy tax. And I want to share with you, as we see some of our motel operators becoming long-term long -term or extended stay housing arrangements, uh, the ordinance as it's currently written only allows for transient occupancy tax for a finite period of time. It's not extended stays. And so we are likely to see a decline. And in, even as I observe in other uh, jurisdictions of Imperial County, many of those motel, motels uh, that were nightly rented have become weekly mm -hmm. and otherwise uh, types of housing solutions. Uh, the TOT as it's currently structured is likely to decline in significance. Uh, we have, uh, the city has received a request to consider an increase in the TOT. Uh, how the council wishes to um, answer that topic in the future is, is for the, the council's uh, consideration. We also, as, as was evidenced tonight, have MOU renewals. And in the past, our renewals have been on a three year, in the time I've been with the city, it's been three years for each time period. What is associated with MOU renewals, regardless of the unit, the bargaining unit, or the unrepresented portion of our employee base is uh, that they typically involve uh, 
merit increases, which are on a, just on average represent a 5% increase across five steps for most classifications. So uh, what is discussed was made note of earlier today that had to do with whether or not increases have occurred. It's, it's not recognizing that merits are actually built in to our typical way of doing business. And anybody who isn't in a public agency sees merits as an increase in pay. Uh, but it, it's also indicative of how difficult it can be to continue to have costs change and increase year after year as uh, people progress through steps. And uh, there's not only that notion of merits, but also cost of living adjustments. And those are being sought um, for, for Council's consideration. And I, I say it not because we're using this meeting for negotiating purposes, but just for uh, education on the bigger picture of what MOU renewals translate to is uh, if you're, if the city is offering greater uh, benefits in the future, it's going to be at a greater cost. And so how we take the finite number of resources that we have and apply them to existing service levels, uh, knowing where we ended in our last fiscal year budget adoption with a patch of about $150,000, $140,000, $150,000, um, we know that our revenues don't keep pace with our expenditures. So as expenditures continue to go up, we either need revenue growth to keep pace or we need to shrink and find other ways to live within our means. Um, as you know, the, the cost of doing business period increases with time and um, the city has experienced that in the form of, in, in recent years, Affordable Care Act requirements associated with temporary employees being now provided, affordable health insurance, uh, as well as uh, the increased costs of uh, minimum wage. And our minimum wage, uh, as you know, we have backfilled many permanent opportunities, employment opportunities. We backfilled them with much lower cost employees that are defined as temps. And those temps almost universally, with a few rare exceptions, all get paid minimum wage. Uh, or a small increase above that allows us to meet the Affordable Care Act requirements. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. we anticipate um, an, a continuing increase in the cost of doing business like all uh, employers are experiencing in the state of California. Um, we also want to just take a moment to emphasize that there's um, always a price associated with maintaining quality of life services. In Brawley, I would describe those quali quality of life services as what you get when you dial 911 uh, from our fire and police uh, department personnel what you get when you're uh, seeking information or a cooling center at our library, um, or what you get when you're trying to access incredibly affordable uh, rec programming um, at any of our uh, Lion Center uh, uh, programs. Um, I, you know, I, I do think sometimes we don't take enough time to stop and say it's, it's pretty extraordinary that for five weeks of what uh, really is youth development combined with child care, what we charge our, our residents for that type of service is, is nothing short of extraordinary. And it's a source of great pride, I think, for our department to have been able to offer that for as many years as we have. But when we don't keep pace with the cost of doing business, just know it, it comes from other places. So uh, again, just underscoring that our financial stability is, is a huge question for our uh, city into the future. And uh, when I kind of think through the economic development component of what's occurred in Brawley, and, and sometimes it's hard to see when, it's, when, it's, when you're in the midst of it transpiring. We've got a residential revival that's going on. We also have construction activity for commercial type uh, development in areas where there are vehicle trips. And so, for instance, if you just look at Highway 86, period, whether it's you know from Las Flores to First Street up Brawley Avenue, if you look at the new construction and renovation of existing commercial properties that have occurred in that area, it's very different mm -hmm. from other parts of the city. The only other, uh, what I would say, addition to that is uh, Porter uh, Ranch specific plan area also incredible uh, vehicle trips associated with a high visibility parcel. Game changer for yeah. Brawley and hopefully a beacon of, of what could be coming in the future as other commercial activity. Uh, we, although we haven't witnessed it, we know that building permits have been pulled for a large commercial development 
on Pano. And uh, you know, we hope to continue to see Pano and Highway 86, that area, fill out in ways that are meaningful for our residents as well as uh, folks uh, uh, who engage in business-to-business -business activities. Uh, but you know, economic development for our city has meant uh, large corporate entities making their way to city limits as well as the small merchant finding ways to fill uh, spaces along our uh, commercial corridors. Uh, the big names are really landing primarily in the high vehicle trip areas and I, I think that does present some somewhat of an opportunity for us into the future, especially as we think of other areas in the city long term that are go going to have that same type of attraction and uh, level of traffic that's necessary to bring in those types of anchors. So what are our hot topics? This is just a smattering of them and I, I thought it was key to take a few moments to, to touch on them. Main Street, we've got our two link topics. You know, we move forward with an awesome improvement to 8th Street um, and we're very proud of what's uh, being accomplished out there but what it remains is the Main Street corridor and the question of how we will address the water line, the below surface improvements before the surface level improvements occur. Um, the council also provided direction in our uh, last budget cycle that there is a willingness to take a look at cost recovery strategies for key services. Those were primarily defined as emergency medical services uh, and possibly others. And uh, we have engaged the help of an outside consultant to assist with that and are well underway <coughs> with the body of work to support uh, an item that will come to the council in the future. I um, want to also note, because it's a subject of so much complaint uh, prior to, to today's meeting, is uh, the, the feedback from user groups that we are not investing adequately in the services and operations of parks and recreation. And while we may have really done a great job at maintaining service levels in spite of reduced staffing in place, uh, there still continue to be demands on a desire for more. And so I, I felt like I would be re remiss if I did not point out that we have these patches that have now been in place, some of them for many years, with the intent of adding them back in and an inability to do so from a financial point of view. So um, our interim director, probably the most uh, significant and symbolic, was the leaning that we did based on retirement and, and trying to join uh, oversight at least on a temporary basis so we didn't have to reduce any other positions. And uh, so the naming of the interim director allowed for the blending of the library and parks and recreation, but on a temporary basis. Uh, we also have uh, two, uh, the senior center coordinator and the admin secretary as temps and uh, two maintenance workers that used to be permanent. Uh, and the goal of the temporaries was to maintain at least a certain level of service, but accept that we weren't in a position to offer permanent staffing um, options. On the fire side, I want to talk through some of these items as well. We have had repeated requests from our airport users for the fire station to pay rent and for that rent to be uh, a payment payable to the airport enterprise. We bring this topic up every uh, budget cycle to um, acknowledge that we are in receipt of the request and formal communication for the, from the airport commission. The difficulty with uh, addressing this request is that lease payments are out of the general fund. So in order to pay a lease of the fire department, so out of the general fund to the, the airport enterprise, uh, we are going to need to trim somewhere else out of the general fund. With 80% of our budget being people, it's likely going to be people. So um, we're seeking direction on this topic of the airport lease arrangements. Are, is this going to be the year that we take on that topic in a different manner? I want to also note that the, the opening of fire station number two did have a 50% staffing plan associated with it. That 50% staffing plan plan aimed to add one firefighter per year for four years for a 50% staffing level. We uh, actually suspended that program after year three 
due to the cost associated with a permanent versus a temporary. And uh, it's clear that in the next planning horizon, it's going to be very difficult to accommodate that staffing plan uh, in the next budget cycle in 1920. We also <coughs> noted that uh, the fire marshal position was eliminated as a cost-saving measure uh, following the retirement of Manuel Sevilla. And uh, as we've gone through our acting chief rotations, I think there's been a great deal of appreciation expressed by all of our captains in the rotation that the duties that were previously uh, carried out by both chief and fire marshal, <coughs> the admin responsibilities are significant. And so uh, the elimination of that role means that the, the fire chief in uh, his capacity is tasked with a great deal more. And um, the question is whether or not that's going to be a sustainable arrangement in the future. Other temp arrangements, high priority to city council, full-time graffiti abatement uh, worker that is housed inside of the PD, does an amazing job. Council, um, I think, has always recognized his skills and capabilities um, and had the hope of making it a permanent position. But again, uh, very uh, probably grim prospects of, of a transition to permanent uh, with that position. And then code enforcement officer was funded at the 50% level uh, for the remainder of this fiscal year. So uh, that position is also scheduled to actually, it's actually scheduled to time out at the end of the fiscal year. Um, and then last but not least, and I would be remiss if I didn't do a plug for our uh, information systems uh, needs. We have a great need to update and address our finance software. Uh, the limitations of the current system not only affect utility billing, uh, timekeeping and timesheets, but literally everything that we do as um, business operations in uh, the city of Brawley. And we see this as a very, very important project that uh, needs to be considered in the future because the tools that we are using are severely outdated. And as a result of that, as regulations have changed, it's forced us to do manual calcs for different requirements associated with being an employer of record. I know. I mean, we just have to make sure that whatever we upgrade to, yeah. whatever we do, it's vetted through. And I know Armando will do a good job with that. But yeah. I remember a few years back where we tried to upgrade our uh, business license. And it was a disaster. a disaster. Right. And we ended up reverting back to the old To the old system. fashioned, right. Yeah, so. well, I think one of the great lessons of that is fund balance, the product that we currently have, is really intended for a much smaller operation. So instead of biting the bullet and replacing the entire system, we attempted to do an additive feature, which doesn't work anymore because, the out first of all, it's outdated to begin with. Second of all, it's way too small. It, it, it's too small of a solution for a city of our size. So you're kind of uh, tempting disaster yeah. to try to you know program other features that are appendages to it. Uh -huh. So want to be sure that um, I highlight as, as as a hot topic, and we'd certainly love if there were a way in the budget process to come up with a method for identifying resources. Long term, this is of great benefit to the city and its uh, business operations. In other words, cost savings in time spent on billing and that kind of stuff. Right. You know, it, uh, as we have shrunk, so what's happened over time with the city is we've attempted in trying to keep the service levels up, we've administratively leaned as much as we can, the organization. And so we've lived with fewer people in the finance department in spite of it being an intense manual operation. And the problem with fewer people and manual operations is, number one, you get delayed. And number two, you're more prone to mistakes because the, the uh, amount of work activity that has to run through fewer people is greater. And it's not being performed by machines. So uh, if we're to live within this lean st staffing model, the tools to be successful are, I think, a, a place we need to consider in the future investing. Um, uh, in past years, we've, we've taken a bunch of time to review what, where we've been. I did not do that this go around. My thought was to just explain where our bandwidth is currently based on our queue. You know, we've got roadway projects already out the door right now, and they're going to be going on through the end of the fiscal year. And 
Rosanna, just to kind of accommodate so we can get yeah. some more discussion. Um, I think we can all, we, we've covered many of that. Maybe have to, there's some added things there, but we can read, we can see, we can okay. keep it there if we need to, you know, if council has okay. issues. But um, I, if, if we could, if we can look at the exact and pop over to kind of where to okay. go from there and then get us, get us rolling. Okay, so uh, what is our biggest uh, future hurdle? It's financial sustainability. Um, our past approaches I don't think are going to, to work in the go forward because our ability to, to backfill with reserve uh, is not a strategy that we're going to have as an option any longer. Um, there, while I know that the, the decisions are difficult, it is a zero-sum game and uh, the city staff could greatly benefit from having a prioritiza prioritization of what comes first and what goes next or what is the, the highest value as a whole. Um, one way to look at this, and, and uh, Mayor Wharton did open with this strategy, is focus on what are positive balances in the city's uh, coffers and determine projects and priorities based on uh, the availability of funds. That is one way to, to, to approach this, but I, I do hope at the same time we have the ability to also confront some of the more vexing issues of the day um, in our city. So how would you like us to focus in our future workshops? What, what I might suggest, and then obviously everyone um, feel free to chime in maybe with what you come forward with, but what I... What I figure is we, we've actually continued to spend a lot of time on some of the vexing issues and topics, some of which we're dealing with right now. Um, so obviously we're going to continue doing that. And then as we enter into more of the um, sort of the core part of the budget workshops, I think we're going to have obviously detailed discussion about general fund and some of the other funds. But maybe if we can just take the time that we have right now. Um, I think relinquishment was one of them to begin a discussion. Doesn't mean we have to come to any conclusion on exactly how that's going to be used, but I think it's important that we have a, a public discussion using strategy to get maybe a little bit of framework going, uh, which we can continue that discussion, whether it's through the budget process, whether it's down the road. Um, but I think we're caught a little bit off guard going back maybe about a year ago. Um, maybe it wasn't that long, but approximately um, where that we, we've had several ideas, concepts, or proposals, um, both from council and public, on how that's to be used. And I think there was a lot of misinformation, too, on how those funds can be used. So if, if anything, we just have that discussion. I think that would accomplish a lot. But of course, whatever else uh, council would like in the interest of time, there, we can kind of carry over also with the upcoming meetings. We're going to have ample opportunity to talk about some of these topics in detail. I think a, a great end product, I was actually recently uh, researching where we left off with uh, council direction on relinquishment funds. The intent was for 8th Street money to stay with 8th Street, Main mm -hmm. Street to stay with Main Street, and interest accruals to be assigned in the same proportion. Uh, what we didn't uh, ultimately do is place it into an actual formal either ordinance or city council resolution, but that could be the framework that we use to, to uh, perhaps set up parameters that's guided by the council. Mm -hmm. uh, the actual relinquishment, if I'm not mistaken, is 2012. Mm -hmm. 2012. So it's been almost seven years. Yes, and after this project, Guillermo, uh, where are you? What is our total down on 8th Street? Okay, so we've got about a million of the two and a half original principal sum that we'll have expended. But there should be a maintenance plan for the remainder, mm -hmm. and that maintenance plan can come to, or if you want it to be more flexible, it can be more flexible, however uh, yeah, you my, deem it appropriate. My concern has always been that we, we talk about that, but then we don't really do anything with it. But then we talk about underground, the underground stuff, mm -hmm. but we don't really do anything with the underground either other than fix whatever comes up. Would, wouldn't, I think, personally, I think, in, in looking in hindsight, it's 2020, but in looking back, if we had paved that or redone it when it was relinquished to us or shortly thereafter, then we're not nine years down the road and not do it, not have done anything. Now, at least if it was going bad, we would say that, hey, we approved it for nine years. Now it's bad again. 
And, and see, and I think people will look at that and they think, well, you've got this money, but you don't do anything with it. So nothing right. happens. So the, the underground portion, we, we really truly need staff time devoted mm -hmm. to fi a finance strategy, which is our finance yeah. director and our city engineer and me joining and following up with agencies that have either low interest loans or other uh, um, opportunities. It can be prioritized, but everything else can't be prioritized at the same time. Yeah, that's that's the challenge. I don't think it's going to be prioritized, though. Based on what we can tell you that, but other things do come up. And things so are more stable it. from the public works point of view than they have been in recent years. I We're in a position to actually chase more money than we haven't been in that position and for a number of years. we've been successful. I think we're starting to be successful. but. But the reality is, is when you let the money sit there for nine years and the public looks at it like you're not yeah. doing anything. And so, and, and because we keep saying, well, we're going to fix the underground, then we'll repave it. But if we never repave it, now the money after nine years is not worth what it was when they gave it to well, us. Well, I guess either. here's the question so, from an appetite point of view. Does the council have an appetite for surface improvements knowing that later we would rip up the road to do a water line replacement project? In, in how I think much, you mean how yeah. much later? See, that's depends the on when Is it ten years or on when we secure the financing. Water fund today cannot do it on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 number of resources that are a part of carryover balance in the water fund, you're going to see more and more pressure with each fiscal year for those funds to be devoted to capital improvements at the plant. The plant is timing out. It has features that are expiring that yeah. need investment. And it, when the council has to decide water line versus plant, you're going to choose plant every time. Yeah, right. I, I, because I, it, because it's a necessity. Yes, but, but Sam, I'm thinking um, maybe backing up just a little bit. Yeah. At least we're a we're talking about it right now, but mm -hmm. b maybe coming up. Let's begin some During framework. Budget, so, right, for example, we don't have to get into the whens and the whats exactly, but maybe at least have the discussion of um, how do we want to um, appropriate those funds ultimately. Create a strategy around that. How much of it's for maintenance? How much of it's for above ground improvement? How much of it, you know, do we want to fundamentally change the configuration of Main Street, for example? That's going to be a higher, you know, um, price or ticketed item. Or do we just want to take what we have, make the best of it, and, 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 and stretch those funds as long as we can? So it, it, we need some strategy that yeah. we haven't really come to agreement with. And uh, part of that, I guess, could be um, uh, ultimately codified or brought into an ordinance so that we have some bumpers. Or maybe we don't want to be that restrictive, but let's... I think having a conversation now would be a good time, and we really haven't. It's only come up when certain aspects of relinquishments come up. Oh, we get people coming into complaint. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I the think the public is, does occasionally come around and say, "What happened to the rest of the relinquishment money?" I think and there's why a perception it's been spent, yes. yeah. which there is very is. unfortunate. Always. Like I it's not protected in a a fund. Well, where they want to know why we're not spending it they know and why are we sitting on it. That's because the question that I get. Like, anymore. why are you guys sitting well, on that? Well, nine times out of ten, when I have the chance to explain <laughs> the underground <laughs> component, people understand it because it seems like there's a great deal of distaste for the idea of ripping up a road yeah. once but it's <laughs> improved. Years, of course. I see it more as a leveraging opportunity. The nine million is for the life of maintenance. It's not for a one-time project. So it's you know it's the forever fund. I know I've got that, but but we can't allow it to continue for the next nine years, and then we don't when we haven't done anything. We still have well, especially when you see the beauty of what Caltrans accomplished yes, on West Main and what Eighth Street it, looks like, that right? Makes exactly. Worse. That I makes it that worse. Makes it worse for us from a from a political pressure standpoint that makes it even worse. It's not well, because political pressure, I just think, you know, I think you're right though in the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, nine years long time, we got 8th Street and that was really, you know, just a decision we made recently and so we go how much more time mm -hmm. before we make any additional improvement. Yeah. Well, know, the, the public repair. doesn't really understand like that, that that was a Caltrans project and that it ended right there so then yeah. they're all like what happened to the rest of Main Street why right. did you guys stop there you know yeah so uh, the, it the public doesn't really understand the, the the issue of the funding part and they were expecting the rest of Main Street to be fixed are you saying it's <laughs> easier to, to track down funding for the underground than it would be to find other funding to fix the roadway once if we use relinquishment funds for underground improvements uh, council has never explored the option or directed staff to explore the option of the use of relinquishment funds for water line replacement. Mm -hmm. That has not been something no that has been proposed. 
That project is expected to, I, I think our last estimate four. is here, four million? Four million. So mm -hmm. you would take four of the six and a half for a water line mm -hmm. portion and only leave two and a half plus the interest but, accrued. But I think the answer is yes, we could use those could, funds. Yes, it's up, to, it's up to you guys how you want to <laughs> use those funds. You actually could divert it. And if we did to other water, uses if as we well. If we did the water yes. line project, then we'd tear up the street so people wouldn't expect it to look good. Is that what we're talking about? Um, I, I'm not sure that everybody <laughs> fully appreciates the scale of what's involved with mm -hmm. the Main it's Street water line project. It, it will be massive. It's, uh, yeah. uh, it's a lot of It'll be awesome when it's complete, though. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the, the key. It is. It, I, there's a reason it's expensive. It's a massive you know? project. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Or do you take that sum of money, the six and a half million, and do as much as you can underground and and surface improvement equally and, acceptable and seek out seek out funding to finish it from wherever you ended it seek out funding in what regard grants or financing mm -hmm. options to to do the full four million plus what's it going like to take for surface well, whatever. or low cost yeah. financing so I, I think what you're proposing is make it complete for whatever portion it can be complete right. with the monies available. So the goal of the fund is the forever maintenance. Yeah. How uh, you choose to actually, that was the basis for the negotiation, whether or not you want to use it for that mm -hmm. is your prerogative as a council. Well, am I wrong in, in, in my understanding that the relinquishment funds were in lieu of Caltrans making improvements to those roadways before handing them over? Yes. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yes. So we would still have to maintain those roads once they're relinquished, even if they were new and given to us. And they weren't yes. going to do any undergrounding, right? They were just going to do... Right. Yeah. Um, so, so, they did out here. So, so we would be in the same boat if we were to, uh, to go ahead and use all of the money to do the underground improvements and the pavement repairs mm -hmm. or repaving as we would have been if, if we had been handed a, a newly paved street. And if we want to dream a little bit to do ADA improvements and sidewalk improvements mm -hmm. along the entire section would be an extraordinary. Um, Are there grant opportunities for that kind of it's stuff? It's possible for it to blend. Mm -hmm. Well, we're already getting asked about that, mm -hmm. that there needs to be ADA. Uh, yeah, and, and I actually think we have a pretty darn good yeah. track record in recent years of mm -hmm. addressing ADA have, yeah. um, when we had <coughs> decades of nothing <laughs> yeah. in that area. Yeah, but I I would I would agree with with uh, Councilmember Hamby in that I know I've brought it up before, like what would it cost to have some debt financing to take care of these things? In mm -hmm. other words, what if we finance twenty million dollars to make all these improvements to mm -hmm. do everything? What would that amount to? You know, amortized over twenty years or whatever it is. What would that payment look like? You know, and so that I think is that is a valid question. I mean, if we can afford to do something like that, that could make a very tremendous impact all down Main Street, including the water line replacement, including potentially some ADA some above improvements. Ground and above ground improvements. Yeah, improvements, yeah. you know, so. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Bless you. <coughs> so anyway, just. Some she doesn't, like, she doesn't like that. No, I, it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty million. That was some kind of a reaction. No, <laughs> when she heard Twenty million. Let her relax. You're making it worse. When she heard a million dollar Don't make her laugh. No, don't turn red. You look like Luke. Yeah. <laughs> hey Rosanna, we're willing to go into a twenty million dollar debt, even though you may not be. <laughs> I'm not about I'm not about kicking it down the road in that regard. I I love the pay as you go mentality, um, and I don't know if a bond is a is a better way to try to go about it. I the uh, appetite for that within the voting community probably wouldn't be mm -mm. terribly high, but there are people that drive that road every day and they're sick of it in the condition yeah. that it's in. If there was particular items, but, you know, debt financing too, I mean, it's got some, you know, it's something we, we can consider. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. right. Just to get it all done. Well, 
So in addition to relinquishment, there was also, um, it, it, and I don't mean to rush the conversation, just want to give one some other placeholder other, yeah. to, um, mm -hmm. we've had some internal discussions of staff about uh, the state of the wastewater enterprise and some of the opportunities that uh, might be available because of those funds uh, being in place. Some of the ideas that came to mind were software solutions associated with the plant facility that decrease uh, operational needs into the future. So again, you know, looking at how to modernize and make efficient, more efficient our operations uh, as, as they're configured. Um, number two uh, area would be looking at wastewater projects that we know present a serious challenge to the city currently and are staff intensive in terms of solutions. Um, I'm sure all of you are aware of our septic, uh, the, the troubled septic system that we have at Cattle Call Park and how often we manually pump it on um, a highly, uh, highly frequent basis to keep that the, the restroom facilities operational. There actually is a defined capital project that would create permanent services to that area. If that is something that council might be open to, it's a costly endeavor. We'd have to you know, take a look at what the solution would be, but because we have the availability of funds and a regional facility that truly is put to use throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, we could reduce the amount of staff time associated with, with manual pumping, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, I mean, part of our, our operations. When the, we have high frequency use, we're down there a lot more also. Mm -hmm. So is, if that's something that council might be open to, um, in addition to the ongoing manhole rehabilitation needs, we've, we've got some critical mm -hmm. manholes that if we make it through the fiscal year without an emergency item, we'll be fortunate. Um, we may not make it through the year, uh, and if not, there will be a proposal for manhole-related work in the budget cycle. And we have funds available to do it, so it's a, it's a great match. I think these are, um, so unless anyone's opposed, those, those could be certainly some very, they address some immediate needs, um, I think, proactively. So that's something, again, um, Rosanna, if, if appropriate, if we could do a little bit of work on that and bring that forward to council unless anyone's opposed don't do it no, no. no. okay i mean if it's going to reduce mm. the mm. amount of staff time out there if, if something needs to be fixed then looks like council member mm. is ready to turn in so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh i'm just he's, like um he just wants to give his report it's getting i can't wait to give my report <laughs> yeah. excited we might skip uh, it again yeah, question about the tot we might skip the report again. you said oh, as it's currently okay. structured I know, uh, but it's real long, but I don't want you to get it's for a finite a very lengthy uh, reason. The building, yeah. is it, can it be structured differently, or is that like a statewide? <laughs> The, the prior to you joining the council, <coughs> we performed our first TOT audit. We never audited our transient occupancy tax, and one of our one of our remainder items as a result of that audit is to update our processes, procedures, and forms for existing motel operators. When Ruby departed, that got handed to Rosa, and then it fell to the lower down the priority list. So once our permanent director is in place, our hope is to revive that. Um, at the time, council was considering an increase of the TOT, mm -hmm. but didn't right. feel like it would be appropriate to carry that out until an audit was performed. Mm -hmm. And so that was the, the, the reason yeah. for the audit to be undertaken. And the TOT requires a vote. Yes. Right. So that increase. has to go on. Yeah. Yes, and it's currently so 8%. Council Rosanna, what about the, you mentioned that the ordinance states that it, you can't, um, tax on long stays can that that be changed is that up to um, us i believe it's or? tied to the original ballot language but i could oh, work with bill I, to I, determine I, whether we could when we were going through the audit i think and i'm going to have to look it up but i think that it's there's state law that says your okay. tot has to be limited mm. and it can't go to long term oh okay. so I, i'd have to check that mm. all right uh, yeah, because uh, whatever it is, because it's tra it's transient. Transient. Yeah. It's, trans it's right. more than like you know, so thirty like, days. It, or I remember it has to have a it has to have a definition of what transient is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's thirty mm -hmm. days or less, right? Because then it's like right. a lease agreement. Right. And it's yeah, a long term exactly. tenant. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So hmm. these long term stay way motels. Way. Yeah. 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 There has to be an exemption for people that are there long. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Council, as far as um, unless what I would suggest is maybe just a few of the topics we, we touched on. We obviously have um, the slide presentation to continue to operate off of through the budget workshop. When we get to enterprise fund, we get the appropriate fund discussion. We can bring these yes. um, topics back for maybe further discussion. Gives us a little bit of time to contemplate. Is there anything else? Is Council good with that? I'm good. No, no opposition. No. All right. So I just I just have a question. So uh, we'll we'll be discussing in detail like some of the things that Rosanna brought up, like the mm -hmm. airport lease um, yeah. that they would like for us to pay out of yeah. the fund. I mean, those kind of things are things that we need to discuss. When we get to the enterprise fund and we talk about the airport fund, that that would just be my suggestion. But okay. you know, it if we want to do it right with now, the airport side or the now. general fund side, right. the benefit of it being on the general fund side side is that it then forces the discussion of what are you willing to live without right. as a service. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Something Rosanna, related, thank you. Something related to thank the Thank you, everyone. Well, I'm going to move uh, off of six to item seven on a work, which would be departmental reports, our it's monthly staff report, it? which is in there. And I believe Ms. Bonias might field any questions. Yeah. Honorable Where Mayor, Council Members, Shirley Bonilla's Personnel and Risk Management, uh, the reporter's report <coughs> on page 120, I think it was. Yes. And uh, just want to hone in that we have a, another police officer being sworn in on April 16th. And of course, please join us if you're able at <coughs> 9 a.m. Good. Hopefully, thank we you. didn't scare Officer Martinez away <laughs> tonight. <laughs> you know, the, yeah, so, thank you. I hope not. We'll go to. Um, very good council member uh, reports and what I, all I would ask is again I know we skipped last <coughs> time but uh, um, just being mindful of the time if there's things you want to report off onto the record for um, Alma please do so but if we can move along pretty expeditiously that'd be great um, we'll begin with council member uh, Hamby thank you mr. mayor I'll quickly run through these I was able to attend a hundredth birthday party for Josefina Valadez along with the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission right before a PNR meeting that we had at the Senior Center. Um, attended the uh, extend, extensive planning commission meetings, which were quite a, quite a deal. Uh, attended with council after our last special meeting, a candlelight vigil for Ryan Harsony. I worked along with the Chamber of Commerce and the Boot Committee downtown merchants to do a little cleanup on Main Street right before the Cesar Chavez event. Uh, we went out Friday morning, swept up and washed windows on Main Street. Actually, it, pretty good turnout. There were about uh, 20, 23 people, something like that. And uh, awesome. everybody worked hard. Nice. Um, I was able to work with uh, the, the Eagle Scout project that Dominic Fiorenza was working on out at the research and conservation station. Uh, outside of town, got to help uh, set some fence posts and pour concrete on Saturday morning. I uh, met with um, Gordon and also with Oscar in the building department to discuss a volunteer project at the Senior Center that, that we had ongoing discussions about looking at some plans to uh, get a new handicap ramp put in on their side entrance. And uh, that's about it for my report. Thank you, Councilmember uh, Hemby. Councilmember Couchman. Well, I attended the collab breakfast. I think that was a, a nice event. I also um, attended the Cesar Chavez celebration twice. I went down in the morning and then went down around lunchtime or a little bit later than lunchtime. I thought it was a, they had a, a decent turnout. And I don't know what happened in the evening because mm -hmm. I didn't make it back over there because I, I went to the night at the races for United Way. Mm -hmm. And so I was over there. And then today I attended the Imperial Transit. Uh, station ribbon cutting for City of Imperial uh, with our city manager. Mm -hmm. And that was a nice event too. There were a lot of people there. And with that, that's my report. Thank you, Councilmember Couchman. Councilmember Naba. Uh, just, uh, I won't report anything this time other than I do want to thank um, the fire department to relay this message. They helped my mother out on Saturday. It's the first time we've ever, ever had to call 911 uh, for her to be transported out. And so they were there and they helped her. And so did AMR and so did Pioneer. So. She's been in the hospital for, mm. for several days now, and she's doing better, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure she probably would have died had she not gone to the hospital. So I appreciate the, the fact that they're there. So thank you very much. My brother uh, called 911. He 
asked me to relay the message, and I certainly appreciate it. So if you could please relay that. Thank you. That's it. Thank, thank you, Councilmember Nava, and certainly our prayers. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Um, well, it seems like we haven't reported in quite a while, but um, Co-Council Hamby and I attended the, and I presented the key to the city to Mrs. Valadez, and there were some of the park commissioners there and, and uh, the senior center staff, so a lot of family, so it was a very nice, very nice event. Um, I think she was very grateful. Uh, for a hundred years old, she looks fantastic. <laughs> um, and then I, I did attend a Pioneer Memorial Hospital focus group a meeting uh, that was hosted over at the chamber, uh, just to provide input uh, to the hospital, to the CEO regarding, they wanted to input both positive and negative, how they could improve their services and be out in the community. Um, I think Several of us att attended the League of Cities meeting, and then when we froze to death out there, mm. uh, <laughs> 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 um, we nearly froze. We did. Um, I attended the monthly chamber meeting, and um, they're uh, in the process of uh, still deciding who they're going to uh, bring in as the new board members, and also uh, looking at the uh, recipient for their um, their uh, Brandy, Nine. Brandy Iron Award. Yes, thank you. And then uh, co-counsel Hamby and I um, went and did some cleanup in the Raleigh downtown. I think my husband worked more than I did, <laughs> so I took him along. <laughs> um, but it was a nice, it was an opportunity also to visit with some of the downtown merchants, so that it was a, it was a good um, time to be able to talk to them and see what kind of issues they still have. And then I did attend the Cesar Chavez celebration and ended up staying till the evening, through the evening, and then went over to the Inferno. Um, for the fundraiser for Ryan Harsini. Uh, both were very well attended. There were a lot of people there in the evening. And then um, yesterday I, I attended my first uh, Imperial County Film Commission meeting, uh, which was very um, interesting. They shared a lot of good information. Their year is going really well. Um, year to date, they've had a hundred and... What they I won't share a lot of information, but just I was kind of... Um, they've had 189 film filming days in Imperial County year to date, so that's wow. a really good number. So that's about it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And I'll hold my uh, comments. I know I held them last time from one month ago, but uh, other than this last weekend, many of the events that were mentioned um, that I did have the opportunity to attend, I did. So thank you for that. Um, we'll move on to our next item, item nine, city manager's report. If you haven't had a chance to cruise Barioni Boulevard and look at the transit station, the design engineer is the same as ours. Beautiful job. Um, wonderful addition to the transit system and the third station with Calexico being the fourth and mm -hmm. next on the horizon. And really uh, some significant milestones for uh, ICTC, much to be proud of. Um, also just want to briefly note, I have uh, received a request to uh, pursue some further dialogue with AMR about the next phase of services in our city limits, and we'll have something to report out in the very near future about that. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, city attorney. So we uh, posted a notice to to abate on a real nasty house just down the street uh, north of the junior high school. The building department gave it to me, so I went out there and I put a very short window on it because I don't think anybody really owns it. So um, also then, uh, remember the last council meeting, there was all the drama and then Rosanna called me about it on Main Street and I thought, man, we're, this is gonna be long and hard, but between Rosanna and the police and the building department, uh, they solved the problem before I could Ooh. even figure it out. So. Congratulations to them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you very much to our city attorney, city city clerk's report. Nothing. Very good. Nothing to report. <laughs> we will adjourn this uh, meeting to the next meeting Tuesday. And a correction for the record, April sixteenth, twenty nineteen, at six p.m. Thank you, everyone. I think they're still.